Okay. We should be good. I think it is working. We should be good. Yep. We're good. Thumbs up in chat if we're good. Um, welcome to... Oh, let's forget about that. <laughs> oh, and we got the volume back there. Um, welcome today, everybody. Uh, we are here. We are chugging right along. Hopefully, everybody is doing well. April 4th. I can't believe it's already here. David is putting on his seatbelt and gonna... getting strapped in. <laughs> safety first. Uh, safety always comes first. I know a lot of people like that. It's kind of funny. Anyway, um, we have a lot to talk about today. A uh, decent amount to talk about today. It's been a pretty good week, all things considered. Hopefully, everybody is staying healthy and doing well. Um, we'll jump kind of right into it as usual, though. We're going to cover some news, and then we will kind of open it up and just chat with everybody. So, I guess... Uh, oh, they say light's a little bit of a yellow tinge. Mm. It's a little, let me see. Let me see if I can fix that real quick. Um... Let me see here. Because I think I can actually. Um, let's see. Is that a little better? A little better? I don't know why it'd be yellow. Anyway, hopefully that looks better. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, jump right into it. So first thing first was the big thing that was kind of on everyone's mind is... What is Q1 going to look like? Because some things happened starting Q1. Early on in Q1, too. It was yeah. it was shut down in China with the Gigafactory there. So Yeah, so we saw some early on things that could have potentially affected a lot with production and everything. But Tesla pulled through with some crazy good numbers. Uh, almost 103,000 cars produced in Q1 and 88,400 deliveries in Q1, which is actually their best Q1 ever. So they actually killed it with that. So props to the Tesla team. All things considered, you guys did an amazing job. Yeah, that's amazing because, as we said, they had a temporary shutdown of Gigafactory in China as well as the Fremont factory there in California. They had to shut down early in California. Yeah, so team did amazing. Um, if anyone here is watching that works at Tesla, or Elon, if you're here, you never know. Congratulations. Uh, hard work is clearly paying off on that front. It'll be nice to find out the details, like which, how many Model Ys there were in that count, because uh, we, we don't have the breakdown on that yet, but we'll probably be getting that sometime later in April. Yeah, that would actually be really interesting, because I honestly think it it's probably only like 2,000 maybe? It's probably several thousand. Several yeah. thousand? Okay. Yeah. So there might be a few more than we might have thought, but that means they still have like 14,000 plus cars produced, but not yet delivered. So some of that's probably going overseas, uh, maybe a little bit of stock here in the U.S. I don't think very many of that's going to be wise, though. I'm probably like I'm pretty certain that they tried to deliver as many wise as they could. Yeah. So I wouldn't think many are, if any. Um, but yeah. Actually, pretty great numbers. Really happy to see that. And the stock actually responded really well to that. So, all good. Um, next up, we have some early access stuff uh, that we saw on Twitter, thanks to Green, the only. He posts a lot of really cool stuff. Um, so, the first thing first, though, is the Sentry and Dash Cam Viewer in car. So... Um, <laughs> This is actually pretty darn cool. Now that we'll be able... Oh, the video quality is not amazing when I blow it up. But uh, check out his Twitter and everything. You can actually like see all the clips and all the times in the car, which is really nice. So I'm really excited. There's a sweet update. I know a lot of people have wanted this. And um, here it is. Pretty awesome. And then in addition to that, we kind of covered this briefly last time, um, but stopping at stoplights and stop signs. So out of spec motoring actually posted this little preview. Again, this is also on their Twitter, um, but you can see that it is recognizing stoplights, stop signs and stopping and going. So that's actually a fun one. If you haven't seen that, check it out. It's on their Twitter out of spec 
So motor hopefully they'll be coming to all hardware three cars here in the next few weeks or months. Yeah, definitely. I would hope that they push it out sooner than later. Uh, obviously, it's still in early access, but the fact that it's there and it already looks really pretty far along is very promising. Um, and next up, we have early access for out of order supercharging stalls. Um, David? Yeah, basically, it, there was just a release note on one of the early access uh, builds that just says they're going to have uh, more information on. Uh, superchargers that are out of order so that's just going to be a little helpful because right now if you have like a supercharger with 16 stalls there could be a couple of them that are out of order but it, it might show like 14 available but you don't know if there's two people using those or if they're just not working yeah. so it sounds like they're going to split that out and you'll be able to see more details on those in the future yeah that'll be actually just helpful for anyone going to supercharge um and then let's see next up so a new launch mode for Raven S and X. So there's kind of a theme here. Green the only. He's very good at what he does, going through all like the releases and everything and checking stuff out. He actually found this model S and X performance based on Raven will be getting a new launch mode. And so to improve traction, adaptive suspension performs a cheetah stance, lowers the front and adjusts dampening. So that's actually really cool that they're able to use that suspension that they couldn't on previous models. But basically, it's it's kind of like a typical launch mode. Put your foot on the brake, put your foot on the accelerator at the same time, wait for it to show that up, and then release the brake pedal, and then boom, there you go. But it does say at the bottom here, for optimal launch, wait for front suspension to lower further. So a lot of really cool stuff coming. Um and he goes through all these releases and dissects them and comes up with all the good juicy details that Tesla hasn't released. So props to him for doing that. Um, he comes up with a lot of really good stuff. And next up, we have actually some tweets from Elon. And it's also about the Plaid variant. So some conversations were going on on Twitter with a bunch of people just regarding Homelink. And so we do have him actually saying it is a third-party hardware that increases cost of all cars, but only some people use it. So it's only installed upon request. Long-term garage openers are transitioning to Wi-Fi activated. Um, so I'm sure Tesla has all the data they need to see if people are using Homelink. I just wish it was included rather than an extra $300, but whatever. Um, but anyway, the conversation actually turned to any Model S updates for the Plaid variant. And he says, we're actually going to simplify Plaid a little. It was getting too complex, but doesn't go into it any further. Yeah, we've kind of seen that in the past with other models, especially the Model Y most recently, where you know they have plans to put a ton of new features in there, but then they have to pull back a little bit just yeah. so they can push the car out in a good time frame. But the good thing is, is eventually they will add all those other features. It's just it might be another quarter or two before they, you know, you see some of those other hardware differences. Yeah. So I mean, we've been talking about it just between us and trying to think of what could be coming. Could it be the new battery, which we we're pretty sure that's going to be coming? Um, could it be an exterior refresh, kind of like the cars we saw racing at the Nürburgring? Could it be some interior refresh to kind of make it look maybe a little bit more like a Model 3 and Model Y? I would really love to see the air vent, maybe the horizontal screen. Um, but I'm sure there's some other things that they could add that would be really nice. I know David and I have talked a lot about potentially a heads-up display. If they go to one screen, that would be really nice. But it looks like they're going to have to separate some of that out and maybe not push it all out at once. It's kind of a bummer. But, um, yeah, we're still not sure if we will upgrade, actually, the S. Um, it's still it's still a great car. Yeah. And it does everything we need it to do. I mean, I, this, the range is still close to 330 miles. I mean, it would be nice to have a Raven with the newer air suspension and with, the, like, over 390 miles of range. But, yeah. you know, we're, we're still pretty happy with it. And I don't think we need to go ahead and upgrade the car totally, especially if we can get mm. the MCU upgraded, which is kind of leads into our next topic. Um, we're still waiting on our MCU to be upgraded to MCU 2 and for the hardware to be upgraded from Autopilot 2 to Autopilot 3. But once we get that, that car is going to feel like a brand new car again. And uh, 
right now it looks like they still are only upgrading cars that have uh, autopilot 2.5 and MCU 1. Um, there have been reports of a, a few, maybe, autopilot 2 cars <coughs> that got the upgrade for MCU 1, but from, from MCU 1 to MCU 2, but it was only one car that I saw so far. And he said they didn't upgrade the cameras yet, so it does allow the dash cam and the sentry mode, but it still has that R, what, CCC video, which yeah. is it's kind of like monochrome or black and white with with a red channel so it's not perfect it would be nice if they did upgrade the chan the camera so they matched the autopilot 2.5 but at least it works now with the sentry mode yeah yeah and again as soon as we can get that done and are able to we definitely will be yeah. we did ask about it um, yes. last week and and they, they confirmed that it's still not available for our, our vignette Yes, but as soon as we can, it is the first thing we're going to do. I think it's, a, is it 2,500 still? It's still 2,500, yeah, and then so, all the labor and parts and everything. Yeah, so full self-driving will be upgraded uh, because we had already paid for that three years ago. Um, yep. But the 2,500 will cover the new MCU, which really will basically make the car look and everything just feel just like a brand new one. Yeah. The screen will be super responsive. Yeah. We'll have all the games, the... Like, all that. Tesla Theater. So, you know, we were at a supercharger <laughs> earlier today, and we, we uh, watched some YouTube on the, on the Y's center screen. It was Well, they only have one screen in the Y. But, yeah, it was great to keep us busy while we're supercharging. Yeah. And actually, that was, like, one of the first times we've ever actually, like, sat and watched YouTube in the car. Um, yeah, typically when we're at a supercharger, yeah. we get out and either go visit a restaurant or, you know... Stretch our vi legs. Visit some of the stores nearby. But since that supercharger just opened at a mall, which is shut down currently... We didn't really have anywhere to go, but that's okay. We stopped by and picked up some lunch at a, a restaurant and just ate in the car. Yeah, it actually was quite nice. Um, we might have to make that kind of a weekly thing and go get food. Um, let's see. Okay, so one thing everybody loves is Tesla store updates. And unfortunately, it is not the Model Y diecast. I know I'm seeing that in the chat. Um, be nice. as soon checking. as that comes out you bet we're going to be buying them unbox them and maybe try to give one away um but we do actually have some shop news so they have some cool things they added here um up here we can go to vehicle accessories we'll start with this for model y it's the usual stuff but they did add the car cover after our last live stream i believe it was and now this week is the Model Y roof rack. I actually have the Model 3 roof rack. I never installed it on the Model 3, but we do have this now in the store. It's the same price. It doesn't say Model 3 or Y like the key fob says. So like if you look at the key fob, it says 3 or Y. So I'm thinking there might be something different about this, but we're going to try to install the Model 3 roof rack on Model Y and see if that'll work. I'm not sure yet. But the other thing that I've noticed on here is they don't have any wheel options. So I'm sure those will be coming like where you can buy like the Geminis and everything separately. But there was some apparel updates. So now they have a men's zip up track hoodie. $75 in my opinion. A little bit on the steep a little, side. A little pricey, yeah. Um, and then they also have the men's track joggers. These are $60. Again... A little on the steep side for what, like, I pay for joggers, but I'm not going to lie. They look nice. Maybe. I don't know. Comment in chat if I should buy a pair. Actually, please don't because you're probably all going to say yes. Um, and then you have a women's track hoodie. Um, I don't know if they have sweats. I don't think they did. But I'm sure you could just wear the other ones if you really wanted and then I don't think there's any new apparel for kids. I'm yeah, not normally really sure. That, yeah. yeah, I'm not <laughs> normally sure what's on the kids section because I don't normally track that. But I will say this is pretty realistic. Zero to insane in 3.2 seconds. Put that on a baby. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so some cool updates on the Tesla shop. I know you guys love seeing new Tesla merch and everything. So I just kind of wanted to show you guys some of that that's happening as well as the vehicle accessories. Um, and then, so yeah, David mentioned earlier we were supercharging. So there's actually a new supercharger in town. 
Yeah, a brand new one just opened up in Lakewood, Colorado, which is kind of the in the Denver West area at Colorado Mills Mall. It's the largest supercharger in Colorado so far with yeah. 16 stalls. It's brand new, just opened up on Monday, and it's all V3 superchargers. And uh, we've only seen a couple of cars there so far, but uh, it just showed up uh, online in Tesla's app this morning, and we were able to precondition. So we set that as our destination. We were preconditioned, and that just warmed up the battery a little bit. So yeah. by the time we got there, we were able to supercharge a little faster speeds. We didn't have the battery drain totally, so I think we only got about 160 kilowatts at the peak, which is, you know, V3 could get up to three, or excuse me, 250 <clears throat> kilowatts, but 160 was pretty good. So we put a few miles on, ate our lunch, and then took off. Yeah, it was actually really nice, though. Like, normally, yeah, we go and, like, walk around and everything. But it was actually kind of nice just hanging out in the car, eating lunch, watching some YouTube, and just kind of enjoying ourselves. I'm not going to lie. It's kind of like the first time we've really done that. Um, so, yeah, uh, other Model Y news. Uh, I'll get to some of your questions in just a minute. I'm seeing a lot of Model Y stuff. We'll go over a bunch of stuff. Um, but we actually took the Model Y in for a service visit. More on that later this week. But we did get Homelink installed at that time. So we now finally have Homelink in the Model Y. Very excited about that. Again, we'll have another video a little bit more in depth on that. But it was very seamless. And they took care of everything all in one day. And now we have it back, home links yeah. installed and, it was, and doing great. And it was a contactless service visit. Yeah, so contactless. we basically just dropped off the car and we just had told them via the app and via text messages what needed to be done. And they uh, installed the home link uh, transmitter, did a few other minor <laughs> things, and then told us the car was ready via the app. So, yeah. And we got it, like Eric said, we got it programmed this afternoon, just took a few minutes. So it now controls all our garage doors. Yeah. And so, like, when I dropped the car off, you actually, they have like one of those key drop boxes that, other car dealers have and everything if you've ever used those but basically you just like fill out the white envelope and they had hand sanitizer on there to like sanitize the pens and your hands after you wrote everything down which was really kind of nice of them and then you just put your little key cards in there drop it in the box and they took care of everything else it was actually very seamless it was the first time i've ever done like contactless service uh, but they are not doing uh, loaners right now with the whole situation. Uh, but they are giving Uber credits if that is something that you need. Luckily, um, Scott was able to pick me up and then I just used David's S since he's mainly just working from home. Yep. Um, but, but that was nice. And then when we picked it up, I actually got to drive my Model S. I hadn't driven it almost two weeks. It was like 12 days. That, so it was like, wow, it's been a while since I've been driving. But yeah, it was yeah. nice. Yeah, it, it, it was kind of nice. We actually convoyed for a little while. Yep. So yeah, it was kind of kind of nice. Um, and then last thing for Model Y. So as you know, we purchased the Midnight Silver Metallic Model Y with the black interior because there were some delays with white interior at first. We really weren't seeing any white exterior. We just didn't want to delay getting a Model Y. And we're still on order for a white on white, but unfortunately, no news. And now that everything's kind of shut down, I'm not sure when... That one will arrive. Yeah, we were it hoping. Could take know, a while. We'd been contacted by Tesla a couple of weeks ago, and they said they were going to aim to get it to us by the end of March, end of the first quarter. That obviously didn't happen, but uh, you know, we did hear of a lot of deliveries all around the country, so they were <clears> keeping busy delivering them to people. But we just didn't get ours yet. But we're happy we got one, so we we can't complain that we at least got the midnight silver one. Yeah, but definitely looking forward to that white interior. We have the white interior. On his S, on Scott's S, we had it on the Model 3, we had it on the Model X, or one of the, two of the Model 3s, a couple of the Model 3s. Yep. Anyway, we love the white interior, absolutely love it. So definitely want the Y to have that, but it's just going to take a little extra time. So we're just going to enjoy the Midnight Silver. We have some fun things we're going to do to that in the meantime, and um, yeah, maybe, maybe throw some wrap on it, I don't know. We'll have fun with that card, that's for sure. Um, but one thing we do actually have here. Oh, are we are we unbuckling? Yeah, it's like that's done for the news update, so it's okay to take the seatbelt off. So. Unbuckling. Um, okay, so there's this cool dimensions and weights chart. No, actually, it's just the manual, and someone pasted them side by side. So this will actually let you know what the difference in dimensions are. So Model Y here is on the right, Model 3 here is on the left. As you can see, the overall length, really Y is only like 2.2 inches longer. 
So it's really not that big of a difference. And then the overall height is uh, roughly eight inches taller. So that's where you get a lot of that extra room. So that's kind of nice. It feels very X-like almost on the interior. Yeah, so for the, for the most part, the Model Y is either the same size or larger in measurements than the Model 3. There was one number which didn't look yeah. quite right where it mentioned like the hip room in the second row, and it said it's slightly a little smaller in the Model Y, but I'm, I, I think when we measured, it came out to be like the same width as the Model 3, so I think that yeah. might be, it might be just because of the way they're measuring the seats mm -hmm. with the, the 60-40 or the 40-20-40, maybe that makes it... Uh, you know, maybe they're measuring from different places. I don't know. Yeah, so in the rear, they got 52.4 on the Model 3 and 50.6 on the Model Y. So I'm curious to know where those extra two inches went. So we're going to double check measurements and everything and see kind of where they might have done all that. Um, but overall, uh, if you want a good chart, you can definitely pause and screenshot this and kind of go over it. It just goes into a lot of good detail that a lot of people have been asking. And rather than do a lot of these measurements ourselves and potentially get slightly different things, these are the official ones. And then we will verify these against ours. But I think these are very reliable. I don't see why they wouldn't be. But it is kind of nice to see that. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of it on like the news front and everything we had. So we can start kind of going through some questions. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of Model Y things, so I'm just going to hit on a few things real quick. Um, Tobias was asking, any news on when Model Y is going to hit Europe? Unfortunately, we haven't heard anything. I, I'm honestly not sure. Any ideas, David? No, I, I did see something about next year for some countries, but they didn't say if there were going to be any other foreign countries this year. <laughs> I think uh, we're just going to have to kind of see how the whole... Uh, I don't want to say the C word, but coronavirus thing pans out. Um, I, I think that's going to have to do with a lot of it. It depends on shipping companies. It depends on a lot of stuff. Um, but yeah, um, FC is saying Fremont is shut down likely through the end of April, possibly as far as June. Wow. I didn't hear it to be that long. <sighs> But hopefully, Yikes. I think they still have some essential employees. I think there. they can still do what twenty five percent output, something like that. So I'm sure they're still working on you know re restructuring things or installing new equipment, new robots and stuff like that. So it's yeah. not like you know they're not making any progress. But totally. so when they when they do open, hopefully you know they'll be set up and be all prepared for making the the Y. Q two uh, might look a little lower. Yeah, yeah, definitely compared to Q one. I'm still amazed that look they had record numbers for Q one considering they had to shut down early and. But oh, it yeah. does help having that second factory in China now, though. Uh, definitely. And to be honest, a lot of analysts did not see that coming. Yeah. They all projected surprised. maybe like 70 or 80,000 produced and so even less delivered. And Tesla blew that out the water by 30, 20, 30,000. So, I mean, definitely huge props to everyone at Tesla for just busting butt and getting all that done. They've been doing an amazing job. Um Let's see, John said he just had Homelink put in yesterday. They came out to his house and installed it in his garage. So actually when we did Homelink for Model, Model 3, 3. Yep. they actually came out here and did it right in the garage also. Uh, but for Model Y, there were a couple things uh, we took it in for anyway. And during that time, they just installed it then. Otherwise, I'm sure they would have just come out to yeah. do it because it's supposed to be even easier to install in Model Y than it is in Model 3. Yeah, basically on the Model 3, they used to have to remove the front bumper and that's kind of a two-person job or if it's one person, you got to be careful not to drop the bumper and, yeah, and, and scrape, get, scrap scrape it things, on, the, yeah. on the concrete or on the ground. And so it sounds like with the Model Y, it's a one-person <laughs> job and they can just stick their hand, reach around and, and connect it, uh, insert the uh, transmitter and insert the bolt and you know it sounds a lot easier to install. What he said. <laughs> um yeah it's easier to install so um that, that's great hopefully they bring that same method over to model three especially being that i honestly think a lot of people are getting home link installed 
according to what Elon said, it's not very many, but I think it is. So yeah. I still wish they offered it as I'm an sure option, he has better data. like that you could order it and it came installed and delivered that 110%. way. One hundred and ten percent. If they would just take it off the truck, they could insert it, you know, install it right there at the service center. Yeah, and then you just pick it up and you don't need to come back because there's other people that you know might live a hundred miles away from the service center. You don't want to have to schedule a, a mobile. A technician or take it back and it's like they should allow you to do order it and get taken care of when you pick it up but completely oh. agree they definitely should do that i if you're wish, listening tesla please allow people that have already paid for it to have that done so when they pick it up it's all good to go That'd even be really if nice. they still keep it the way it is where you have to order it from the shop and have it totally. delivered they know about your order and they, you know when they're scheduling your delivery they could just say hey do you want us to go ahead and install this and mm -hmm. in our case we got the transmitter the home link transmitter about a week before we got the call for the car we just went ahead and stuck it in the front so it would be ready for them when we dropped it off for the service appointment exactly um let's see real quick some people are asking um, do I miss the Model 3? So I love the Model 3, but I really love Y just because you sit up a little higher, which is easier to get in and out. I kind of like that. Um, and I also just love the utility of that vehicle that Model 3 doesn't have. Since Model 3 is a trunk instead of a hatch like Y, it really does limit you on what you can and can't put into it. So... I'm very happy with Y. Now, mm -hmm. if I was presented a Model 3 and a Model Y, and I never had either one of them, I would just go with Model Y from the beginning. Yeah, I definitely, I don't miss the 3. I, it, it, again, it wasn't a bad car, but the Y to me is a better car for our, for my usage in every way, just because there's more cargo capacity and it's a little higher up, better visibility, so, and, and newer with that heat pump. So. Yeah, it, exactly. So the heat pump is another huge thing that helps range even more. I'm curious to know what Model 3 will get with a heat pump. That'll be yeah. interesting Hopefully be, to know. They'll be sending that in the next few months if they don't have it already. Yeah. Well, I guess they're shut down, so maybe well, once they start back up, the 3 might start having that heat pump in it. Totally. Um, let's see. Nathaniel is picking up a Raven Model X on Tuesday. I had a Model S and a Model 3, but not an X. Pointers or anything of that nature. Um... Are you getting a five, six, or seven seater? I guess that would be a big question. Um, yeah. One thing I would point out with the Model X is if you do have a garage and park it inside, just make sure you uh, program it, you know, check the door height. Oh, and yes, stuff when definitely. When you first open it up. And make sure those doors are closed when you go in and out of the garage because we do know some people who have, you know, accidentally left the doors open and maybe hit the side of the garage. And we've seen some videos of people who have damaged their Falcon Wing doors. So you just got to be careful with those. They do have sensors on them, but I would always, you know, keep an eye on them. Yeah, definitely the doors do swing out a lot more than uh, like people might think for your height. Yeah, unfortunately in our garage, we do have one garage which hi has higher ceilings, so we were able to open the doors up there no problem. But if you have a, a lower or if you have a garage uh, door opener that has the chain and it's mounted in the center, you just just something to be aware of when you're uh, programming. But you can program those doors so they don't open up all the way if you don't want them to. Exactly. Um, but yeah, absolutely love the X. Congratulations. We had the six seater, which I prefer the six over the five and the seven. But the only downside with the six seater is that middle row or the two captain's yeah. chairs don't fold flat. Yeah, I think it would have been about perfect if they did fold. If flat, they folded which... flat, it would have been amazing. Yeah, because that just opens it up to being able to haul bigger things. It makes it easier to More sleep in it. More versatility for cargo. Um, yep. So that would be my only thing I would love to see on model X six seater. Um, Helmuth, any ideas of when they will change or what they will change with Model 3 with, like, why? Will they do 40, 20, 40 seats, etc.? Um, I would imagine maybe, at least I think what they should do is make it so if you put down, like, the uh, armrest in the middle that you can pass stuff through. Yeah, like a pass through. Yeah, That would be really beneficial. I don't know if they'll go full 40, 20, 40 seats. Yeah, because I don't think it's as important because since the yeah. three is a sedan and a trunk, you're really limited on things that you can put in there. So I don't know if they're going to add those buttons to have the seats auto fold <laughs> or, or that yeah. split seat like that. But yeah, I could see a pass through because they would just have to change that. Uh, the pass through would be great. Yeah. Um, but the the uh, as we mentioned before though the heat pump might be something coming to the Model Three as well. We would expect that, but you never know. Yeah. Um, Abstract Ocean sponsors in the chat. Welcome. Um, they have Wi-Fi enabled openers. So based on Elon's comments, maybe they'll add a Wi-Fi option to the UI. 
probably still needs to be licensed though yeah because there's so many that would need probably need to be licensed but yeah. we actually have ours on wi-fi also yeah so yeah. that would be welcome just as much as home link uh especially if it was free over having to pay 300 for home link yeah. i would definitely go that route because yeah, basically for our garage doors openers we have a gateway it's my queue and basically it allows us to control our garage doors over the internet. We can see if they're mm -hmm. open or closed. You can see how long they've been open, when they were last open or closed. And there's, there's, you can lock them. There's all kinds of uh, functionality available via Wi-Fi. So I'm surprised others haven't upgraded to those yet. So it'd be neat to see those, you know, as they expand to others, other manufacturers adding those functionality. Yeah, and based on what he said, it just adds a hardware cost, so if they can just kind of transfer everything over to Wi-Fi, I'm sure it would be good. I, yeah. I'm sure they offer like different Wi-Fi wi or Wi-Fi gateways for other openers. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if you can. They do have, add that for. You can old actually garage. even add like okay. the MyQ gateway to, or there's similar ones that you can actually add to old, you know, existing garage oh, openers to make them so you can control them mm -hmm. via Wi-Fi. And you know, once you get the car close enough, it connects to your Wi-Fi hotspot. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it could send the signal right then and you wouldn't need that home link transmitter anymore, but not a lot of people have that capability yet, mm -hmm. but it, it would be nice. Uh, would you even have to wait until you get close enough to get on your house's Wi-Fi since the car has service anyway? I don't know. But because also, I don't know, like, it, ours... Actually, you don't even need to be on Wi-Fi because they yeah. can do it via LTE and GPS. Exactly. You yeah. can make it... The car can send the signal when you're a block away or, yeah. you know, however... You could program it however you want, but we can actually send the signal via the internet. We can be across the world and open and close our garage doors yep. if we want. Yep. Um, D asks, have you hauled around the Ridgebacks yet? Do they fit in the back seats? So we haven't done that yet. It's been very rainy and muddy here. Yeah. And, and there's no all-weather floor mats for model y yet and we don't have a cargo uh, cover for the back part yet. exactly yet. so i kind of took the one from the model 3 and threw that in the y for now but it leaves a lot of openings and everything and i just don't want to ruin the back of that and also we're still trying to kind of gauge how quickly we could get a white on white because if it's gonna be yeah quicker than not we probably won't put the dogs in this because the white on white's the one we're 100% going to be keeping the midnight silver. We're still not sure what we're, what the plan's going to be with that. Things have obviously changed in the past couple months. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, definitely when we get the white on white one, we'll yeah. do that. And hopefully by then there's some floor mats. So our, our dogs do have really short coats, so they don't shed yeah. much, but they have, their hair is so short though, that you don't necessarily notice it until it really is everywhere. And since it's a lighter color on that black, uh, carpeting in the midnight silver car, it would be noticeable and so we're just trying to keep that car as clean as possible if we do end up tr selling it or trading it in another reason we haven't really taken the dogs out is because you know this whole shelter in place thing we haven't really been a lot of places and also we live close to some open place parks open space parks so we don't really need to drive anywhere whenever we take the dogs out we can hike in pretty much any direction and there's all, there's trails that we can go on yeah the only time the dogs lately get to go to in the car is if we're going to the vet unfortunately yeah. they don't need to go very often yeah, and that we just do in Model S for now. Well, we didn't have the Y. The oh, yeah, we didn't have it, it actually last so time we, we went. It, but. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. Are you guys getting a Roadster or pre-ordering it? So we actually won a few of them from the referral program. Huge shout out to anyone who used our referral code. We love you guys so much. Um, so we are going to get some. Um, just a matter of when at this point. Um, they said 2020, Mm. Honestly, like I, I'm not holding my breath on 2020, yeah. especially with recent events and yeah. everything. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely be getting some. Um, let's see. David asked, "Do you think off-road mode will m make it over the X?" Um, I think they might offer that there because I know that right they now, should because it has air suspension yeah, which and, makes it even more flexible and there's some extra warranty coverage available on the x that isn't on the s or the oh, three yeah. and that's just because it it has the higher clearance so i could see them offering that uh, off-road assistance for the x eventually as well i at definitely hope at least for the raven i don't know if they're going to go back to you know pre raven models but i could see them adding it for you know 2019 raven models and newer yeah exactly exactly that would be really nice hopefully they do that because they have the air suspension it's just a matter of creating software to utilize that um KO'd, will wrapping the car affect the sensors so this is actually a really good question and perfect timing mm -hmm. so we have done wraps on um 
both the three and the S's. We didn't do actually rap on the X, uh, but I know a lot of people that have with zero issues. Now for the Y, we haven't wrapped it yet, but I know people that have have had issues with their sensors not working with PPF over the sensor. So we saw this, what was that, with early Model 3s? Yeah, we saw it with Model 3 and then again with the Model Y where sometimes the wrap can affect those ultrasonic sensors. Yeah, so I think they just need to work out a few kinks maybe and all that on Tesla's side because there were a few issues with Model 3s with the wrap over the sensors and then an update came out and now there's no issues. So I think it's just because it's so new, they just kind of err on the side of caution, but definitely be careful of that if you do get your car wrapped. Um, because I do know somebody who accidentally hit some things in their garage yeah. in their brand new Model Y and left a little dent. Yeah. So just be careful. Um, yeah, as with anything that's new. Uh, Real World EV, do you guys have any channel merch? No, but we've actually been talking about some things. Might be something we'll be adding in, More the, in, the, in the near future. Yeah, Definitely. Uh, any news on German Gigafactory? I haven't heard, heard anything heard this week. Anything on that in months. The last I saw, they were going through and there was some unexploded ordnance, you know, left over from yep. World War II. And we saw them blowing that out. And, and they also cleared a bunch of the trees. The rest of the trees, but I haven't heard anything since then. So I think this whole coronavirus, you know, it's worldwide. It's really slowed things down. It, it definitely is, which I, I completely understand. It's, 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 it's shutting everything yeah, down. Yeah, and especially Germany, I think, is like the, has the fourth highest number of cases right now. So it's like the United States, Italy, Spain, and Germany. So I can see things are... You know, that's not a top priority in Germany right now. Yeah. They're probably having this shelter at, at home just like we do. Yep. At this time, it's probably better people just stay safe. Um, Gigafactory land will be there in a month. It's not going to go anywhere. Um, I, of course, I want to see it built as quick as possible for Tesla, but I'm sure um, it's not going to go anywhere. We'll, we'll be seeing it soon, hopefully. Um, Benny, should I wait to buy Model Y with seven seats or buy a Land Rover Discovery? Well, I'm not pro gasoline power car, so I'm just going to say buy the Model Y. Um, Model Y is great. Actually, we've been loving it. Um, have you even driven it yet, David? Um, I don't think you have. Uh, I, I only, I only moved it in the driveway. That's all I've done so far. Okay. So yeah, I guess not. I had to think about that because I've okay. been in it a lot, but no, I've only like moved it around the driveway. So. Okay. So we, we need to get his full reaction, but I absolutely like said, love the one. Yeah, I haven't driven in like two weeks except for when I dropped you off at Tesla. Oh yeah. Day. So it's like, it's been a while. Yeah. yeah. I absolutely love the Y. The drive is great. Uh, I think it's more comfortable than the Model 3 and I think you'd be really happy with it. The seven seat option though, I would... I would probably not go for one. I don't have any small kids. Don't yeah. plan on it. Um, but also those back two seats, they're going to be very tight. Very, and yeah. I wouldn't think kids over, what do you think? 10, 12? Oh, and I don't, I don't know if even a 10 year old, oh. they'd have to be short okay. to fit back there. So it's, it's going to be tight, especially the nice thing with model X with six seat option. And that's why I loved it so much is because it does have that little like aisle between the middle row that people in the third row can put their legs. Model Y won't have that, so there's not going to be a ton of room to put your legs. Also, you can move those middle row seats forward. Yeah, whereas too. right now with the current Model Y and the five seater, the seats don't move as far as I know. We can't move that second no. row forward any. There is plenty of leg room, I and mean, there's probably like at least five extra inches of leg room in the second row. So who knows? Maybe if they bring out a seven seater, they might move that uh, second row forward just to give a little bit of leg room to the third row. But yeah, I don't see how there's going to be much headroom back there for seven you know six and seven passengers yeah i i wouldn't buy it for seven but that's just my opinion take it with a grain of salt i don't really know how much room kids take up either <laughs> i just assume it's a lot um let's see james says you guys safe stocked up on supplies thanks james we are staying safe hopefully you and your family are as well as well as anyone watching um we we have plenty of supplies we've been just kind of doing our thing Around the house, like you said, yeah. David hasn't really gone anywhere. Yeah, we stocked up back um, in like January. Yeah. We kind of saw things happening because Eric was in uh, J 
China actually, when the whole thing started, with them starting to lock things down, he made it back right before... I don't think I ever got coronavirus. We, yeah, but uh, we don't know. But um, luckily, he never was sick, as far as we know. Right. So he could have been asymptomatic, or maybe we don't have it. But basically, we've been stocked up since January, early February, and we really haven't been shopping at all in the last couple of weeks. So no, we I we mean... We haven't needed to. We have a couple fridges and everything that we generally keep stocked up. Um, we're actually going to be starting something new i don't even know if you guys might want to see it on the channel i don't know comment let me know but we're starting up some hydroponics um for like some lettuce and some veggies i don't know if that might be interesting on the channel uh we haven't filmed anything of it yet but kind of just exploring that route just so we don't have to go out if we don't for the need fresh to. vegetables and stuff like that and we've had gardens exactly. in years past so we're already getting ready to <clears throat> you know, plant our seedlings and stuff like that so we're gonna have our garden garden this year yeah um, but I don't know if you guys want to see stuff like that, let me know. Maybe we'll vlog some of that. Um, but yeah, we are doing well. Hopefully you and your family are as well. Uh, Bill says, I don't know if full self-driving is possible without LIDAR. I feel like we're being trolled. I don't know. That's, you know, but it is a good, it's just questioning. It, it is a good <laughs> question, but like what we have seen is LIDAR still wasn't foolproof. It has a, own slew of downsides well, also um, with you know we but, don't have lidar ourselves and right. we're able to drive we're just using vision just and we vision. only have two eyes so if and a i think car, that's elon's it, outlook yeah if a car can have eight cameras so it's looking 360 degrees and they have radar too yeah. then i think yeah it should be possible without lidar i mean lidar definitely would be useful something you can't have but if it's possible without lidar then why add extra you know equipment that you don't need in the future and lidar is crazy expensive yeah I've so s i've seen you know they're always coming out with newer ones yeah and some that don't spin they're static but oh, okay i don't know but they're still not cheap from what i've seen yeah it's still very expensive i think i saw um one of those big car companies that's trying to do full self-driving cars um like one of their cars was like four hundred five hundred thousand dollars because of all the extra equipment yes they're one off they're custom built and everything but that's a, that's a lot of money. Um, let's see. So Benny was able to get some answers from FC about a Land Rover LR4. Thank you for helping him out with that. Um, oh, he said it guzzles gas, though, and underpowered. But it does do good off-road. So I guess it depends on what you're really looking for. Yeah, I think the Cybertruck is going to be a lot better off-road oh, yeah. vehicle than the Model Y. The Definitely. Model Y is still probably for on-road, you know, around town. But Cybertruck is... A lot more ground clearance. Yeah. Uh, Capturing the Awesome is asking, how do you think they will go with manufacturing and deliveries in the current pandemic situation? So, well, they've already started doing like contactless deliveries. If you are able to do that in contactless service, I think the biggest thing is going to be parts in the supply chain, to be honest. Um, I know a lot of places, though, in China seem to be starting to come back online, which is a good sign. But I, I honestly think it's going to be a lot of supply constraint more than anything. Yeah, and I think in China, aren't they doing like two to 3,000 cars a week still? I, yeah, I, I, th I think they so, now are. So, yeah, yeah. so they had the, the shutdown and they got started back up, but they're producing thousands of cars. So hopefully once the Fremont factory is allowed to open back up and, of course, the Giga factory producing the batteries, hopefully they'll be able to start turning them out again. But as, as we mentioned with the numbers earlier, there's about 14,000 cars that were produced that were not delivered yet. So we don't know how many of those are going overseas, but they still have plenty of deliveries, yeah. you know, plenty of inventory available for deliveries. Yep. Uh, Thomas, on the Y, have you seen the rear hatch not close unless you specifically tuck in the compartment cover, grab strap in? Happens to me all the time. Um, no, I don't actually tuck mine in. I just leave it out and I haven't had any issues. I haven't even really noticed. I'll have to So maybe yeah. see if service needs to just adjust something. That would be my potential guess. But I honestly haven't had any issues with that. Um, let's see. Kev is asking about the roof rack for Model Y. We are considering it. I really want to hitch, though. I don't want to have to lift my bike up on yeah. top. I That scares the crap out of me. Um, but we have the Model 3 roof rack. We'll see how it fits or if it will fit on Y. And um, I hey, don't can know. You, can you check on the specs right there, the exterior dimensions? Like, <clears> is the width? How much is oh. the width difference? So... Because it could be that it's a couple inches width. wide. I mean, the width is different, uh -huh. but we don't know the width of the roof glass. Yeah. So I, I mean, that might be why the Model Y has its own version of the roof rack. and, and it, it might So we have well one, we'll, we might open it up, 
try it out, see if it fits. If it does, maybe we'll put it on. If it doesn't, then yeah, we. You know, if it doesn't, yeah. Model Three roof rack yeah, for sale. We'll probably get one. We'll probably get a Y roof rack, and then we'll put it up for sale because we won't use it. But yeah. we're still hoping that we get some news on that tow hitch because we yeah. definitely would get a, a bike rack. And that is what we really for want for the tow hitch. Um, I just, I understand you can put things on the roof and everything. I just, it scares me, especially when know. it's up higher like that. It's that much more exactly. difficult to lift it up higher. So. It, exactly, and it, it just, it just scares me. I especially with the glass roof. Especially with the glass, exactly, yeah, for sure. Um, let's see. Um, John said WeatherTech should have theirs in about six weeks for Model Y. Okay, yeah, I know there's some other companies coming out with uh, all weather floor mats yeah. for Model Y. I've been actually approached by a couple of them, so um, I'm I'm sure we'll have some as soon as they get them out which yeah, would be we, great. Yeah, we still have the Max Spider ones which we brought over from the Model 3. They kind of fit but they're not the exact shape yeah. and the ones in the the second row don't cover it cuz there's so much more legroom now and in the front row there's just slightly different but they're good enough for now. So and you know luckily it's we're into spring mm -hmm. so not as much uh, heavy snow as we used to get in winter but yeah, they'll, they'll they'll work until the, another one comes out. Yeah. Um let's see the cool kids asked, does Model Y have the same Easter eggs as 3? Yes. Everything we've seen is the same. Let's see. Um, Will says Tesla rocks. Yes, it does. Absolutely love it. Um, John, how far are you from the service center? We're not too far, but I don't necessarily want to say, like, mileage or whatever. But, like, I mean, we can get there within, like, 30 minutes. Yeah, even less than that, but it's it's not bad. Yeah, and f and now we have the new Superior Center. It's, it's it's straight, well, it's up north in Superior. It's a little further away. Yeah, um, cool kids. What type of dogs do you have? We have three Rhodesian Ridgebacks. Absolutely love them. Um, Tesla will come out to our home, John, and they actually have before. But um, some of the things that we needed done to the Y, I don't think they necessarily do those via mobile. Um, we'll go into that a little bit more. Yeah, nothing major, but it's doing stuff that yeah. uh, single mobile tech can't handle. And yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah. and also we're kind of hoping with that Model Y that we're still waiting for delivery on. Typically, we've taken delivery of all <clears throat> the eleven Teslas that we've popped in the past. We've taken delivery of the uh, the service center either the old Evans one or the one in Littleton. But we're hoping, you know, with these new contactless deliveries, maybe we will be able to get one of those uh, contactless deliveries right in our driveway. I literally want to wake up to a new Tesla like Christmas. Yeah. Oh, well, well that know, would be, that's yeah. my dream. We'll be up. I mean, I'm sure I'll be wake up ready, already waiting. Well, for I mean, it, I'll so. get like the driveway alert or whatever. Yeah, and I'll yeah. be up, but I just, to just like look out the window and just be like, oh, it's a new car. Yeah. So I would be, love that. It'll be fun. So hopefully, they'll, you know, if they're still having to do the contact list, we'll do it. <clears> yeah. If not, it's not too bad for us to drive down on the service center, pick one up. Yeah. Maybe we'll just request they deliver it. I'll pay for that. I just think it would be fun. Um, let's see. Tesla Forever, what country do you think will make the best quality Teslas? Germany, US, and China. So to be honest, I have a feeling they're all going to be basically the same because Tesla is like modeling their lines everywhere else based off like what it is here. And I'm sure they're using the exact same tolerances and everything in all their factories. When I was in China and looked at one made in China versus one made in the US and imported... I couldn't tell a difference. Yeah, just like the badge on the on the just back. The badge on the back and the VIN. Those were the only giveaways. Another thing that's cool about China and probably <clears throat> in Germany as well is that they're able to start the factory from scratch and exactly. set up the process so it's a lot more logical how the materials flow through the factory. I don't know if you've ever seen the the layout of the Fremont factory, but it's a hodgepodge of different it's buildings a mess. that were connected together and the car moves all over the place and back and forth and goes outside and comes back in and goes another place. So it's not the best layout. So it'd be something that'd be nice if they could optimize the layout of the Fremont factory. But the China factory was built from, from ground zero and and it just goes through and then go, comes back out. Yeah. It's a very linear flow. And I'm sure Germany will be that way as well. And so that just means those cars can probably built just slightly faster at those foreign factories because they're brand new. Definitely faster, but I think the specs and everything are going to be yeah, basically same quality, the same. Though. Um, let's see, John, um, thanks for everything. Thank you for joining. Uh, what is the percent window tint on the rear on Model Y? I believe I saw it was 24% from someone else's video. I haven't actually tested it yet. I don't have one of those meters, 
Maybe I should buy one. Yeah, so, so I maybe should. So but we I think didn't it's bother, We didn't bother tinting the rear ones just because they were already <clears throat> tinted, but yeah. we did get our front uh, window, the driver and passenger windows tinted, and so now it looks good. If you pull up like the the oh, thumbnail, yeah. like maybe for the chat, you, I think that's got the tinting on there, but it it's very similar to the yeah. Let me save this real quick, and I'll pull this image up. Um, okay, so saved it. So this is actually what it looks like now. Normally, this is basically like clear, and I hate driving in a fishbowl. I don't necessarily like people to watch me. Um, so you can see it, it's actually pretty similar, maybe even a tad bit darker than the rear in person, but it's actually pretty close. Uh, it mm -hmm. just kind of looks a little different because right here in kind of the middle, you can actually see through the car to the snow in the background. So that kind of lightens it up a bit. One thing I noticed when, when you had the car out there earlier today, it seems like that rear mirror, or the window in the back, it might be an even darker tint, or maybe it's just yeah. because- So it, this little guy right here, this triangle like window, right? Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if the tint's different or if it's just because there's not as much light back there that it looks so much darker, but you can barely see in that window. I mean, you yeah. have to put your face up there to be able to see in and it's, I, maybe they made it a little darker just so you can't see the cargo area. Yeah. And uh, no judgments on the dirty car, please. Yeah, it's been, again, we still it's been a lot of rain and, and snow. Yeah. And, I mean, to be honest, that's actually not terrible looking. I've had them look far worse. Um, Dan says we need a road trip with the Model Y. I honestly couldn't agree more. I actually, we were talking about it before we picked it up. What was it? Late last year on what our plans were. And unfortunately, with everything the way it's gone, there's not a lot we can really do. We might be able to do some day trips or something like yeah, that. Yeah, some but, day trips, totally. But I don't think we want to plan a multi-state road trip right now just because there's so many hotels that are shut down or so many different states have different lockdown, you know, things you're not supposed to be out on the roads. So I don't know if we're going to go anyace far, but we might be able to take it a few places around Colorado. <clears throat> we already are trying to figure out a car camping, so we're going to take it out probably one of these weekends here, test it mm -hmm. out, uh, just, you know, camping mode or, and... but. That's just going to be a quick overnight trip. Not yeah. too far. Yeah. Uh, FC said, heard hydroponics, thought marijuana since you're in Colorado. LOL. I mean, I'll give you the LOL. But no, I don't grow marijuana. I don't, I don't smoke it. If you want to, I don't really care. I actually don't. I'm not into stuff like that. But you like Teslas instead. You do you. Yeah. I spend all my money on Teslas. I don't have any money for that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, let's see. Um Diego, do you have a video of when you found out you won the Roadsters? That sounds exciting now that you mention it. Huh. Well, we didn't really win the Roadsters. They were from the referral program. And so we I think just, we actually did do a video, though. We, yeah, I'm sure we did. Because I remember when they first showed up in our Tesla account, and we did a video, but that was a while back. And so basically, once we, we, we knew we had achieved, you know, once you got so many Teslas, it's like 55 were required, then you earned one. And so, you know, we kept track of how many referrals we had and, and we knew each time we earned a Tesla Roadster. And we did it one when they first showed up on our account, but it, that was a while back. Yeah. And I think we did. I'm pretty accounts, sure we did. Say. Yeah. Um, I, I don't see it right now, but I'm like 99% sure we did. Uh, if I can find it, I will throw it in chat if I can find it real quick. Um, Real World EV, sorry guys, it's after 1.30 a.m. here. I have to go to sleep. Well, good night. Thank you for joining us. Um, get some sleep, though. That sounds really late. <laughs> um, uh, thoughts on the Taycan? Well, I mean, it's it's an EV. It's really expensive, isn't it? It's crazy expensive. Yeah, I, don't I really think... don't think the range is that great yeah, for it's... the price and the battery. I... I mean, for the same price, you can get a performance. Yeah. Um, you, for way less, you can get a, get a performance S or You can X. get a performance S or X and a performance Model 3. For less for than the price of Titan. Exactly. I actually made a video because canceled all reservation and everything for the Taycan that I was kind of hoping for. Um, so, yeah. I Check out the video. I go into a lot of different details on that, on why we canceled it and are mm -hmm. no longer really looking at it. Um, It'll probably be a nice car, but just oh, not totally. the bang for the buck. And also, without having a supercharger network the, and having to the rely charging on, costs, they're going to have to rely on, on third-party chargers. It's just going to cost a lot more than what it costs to charge a, a Tesla. Yeah, especially with the reduced range or the inefficiencies of that mm -hmm. car. Yeah, it's going to cost a lot more. I'm seeing a lot of show the hydroponic setup, so maybe we'll start recording some of that when we get everything set up. 
still in the early stages. So we can um, probably do like weekly updates showing our sprouts and oh yeah, and our, actually that could be kind of fun. Veggies and stuff like that, that. could Just, be kind of fun. Uh, we'll have like off-topic stuff at the end of the chat or something and show that. So yeah, that, that could actually of which, be which we fun. forgot to talk about solar. So we are still oh. have that other garden. Oh my so god, we, we, we got a ton of sun out here, so we do have a lot of solar. We did have a couple days of like snow this week, so it wasn't the best week. I think we produced about 520 kilowatt hours from Sunday through today our highest day was today where we got i think 90 just over 90 kilowatt hours today so mm -hmm. it started out perfect but then we had a few clouds coming in off and on but still a pretty that good day. morning though was yeah beautiful. perfect yeah so yeah that's kind of still sending a lot back to the grid and yeah. for the month of march we are still positive we have uh, produce way more electricity than what we have used and that's just going to last us through probably October we're going to have a surplus of generating more energy per week than what we actually use so that just luckily gets uh, credited to our account and that will just cover us in like November and December January hopefully I can't believe we forgot the solar update sorry guys <laughs> uh, we'll try to remember to do that at the end of the news segment next week but Thank you to whoever mentioned that. I just that checked. Earlier. We're actually still getting solar. It's almost 7 we? p.m. And we're getting, it's not much, but we're still getting 100 watts. So 0 0.1 kilowatts right now. So nice. it's not huge, but it's amazing that we're still getting solar. So then. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Um, Goat said Sandy thinks the third row will be rear-facing. He removed the covers and sat in it. Agree? Uh, yeah. Can you try? Um, we'll play around with that. That's an interesting, because that's that what is. they did on the Model S. And, and Elon you, said it's coming back with plaid. Yeah, and if you look at how it's laid out with that second... Makes uh, way more sense. Underneath the floor, there, that would be the foot room. Uh -huh. and, and so, yeah, that's a possibility. Yeah, so when we went to the Y event, I actually, like, took a photo like of the back two seats that were facing forward and it it was very very tight i wouldn't want to sit back there mm -hmm. I, I mean i don't think i could but like yeah I, that's I actually a good question because also the head would be closer to way the, the headrest and so you would yeah the roof with the slope of it they would have more headroom that way so that that's a good possibility but that's not how it was set up as far you know when you went to the event was it? yeah it was uh so they facing had, forward so they would have had to flip those around since from the unveiling but mm -hmm. that that's a good possibility yeah uh gymnast 1000 um you guys mentioned last week you spotted another possible supercharger location around denver can we elaborate any further we'll David? just say that it's someplace in denver it we're not a hundred percent sure oh that, it's that one yeah, yeah we, we can't say we, anything we yet. haven't can't give the location yet just because we're not a hundred percent sure that it's a tesla location we saw they had you know a bunch of spots marked off we saw a transformer has been installed pretty large transformer but we saw potential spray marks where to tie in with the go. existing yeah so um we're we're i would say what 95 I'm probably 95% sure it's Tesla, but they haven't dropped off the equipment yet. Right. When we've seen some of these other locations, such as Brighton, Colorado, or up in Thornton, they drop off the, the concrete pedestals, which they install the superchargers on, and then you know that's a Tesla location. Yes. This could still be, you know, like Electrify America or some <clears> other one, but, but once we see the Tesla equipment show up, or if we see an employee out there, you know, doing some digging and, and tearing up the lot, we'll ask them and see. But right now, I'll just say that it's, it's someplace in Denver, and uh, I think it might replace one or two of the other locations that they did have coming, but this one would probably uh, be used instead of those. It's not in a bad location. I'm not disappointed necessarily with the location. Um, we'll, we'll have to see, though. So hopefully more info coming soon. That's a nice little hobby we had. We have yeah. found many superchargers over the past few years. We've driven 100 miles and you know out to northeastern Colorado, and we found the first supercharger there in Brush, and we've first to charge there. We've been out to like Sydney, Nebraska. We've been all over the state of Colorado looking for superchargers, and we really have a good success rate on just looking at the map and trying to figure out what would be a good location, and then we can find what what uh, amenities are located there and we've we've been pretty successful at finding those and that's how we found this latest one yeah uh if you follow our instagram and twitter should all be linked in the description that's probably where we'll announce it and then we'll obviously cover it when we do like tesla news at the end of every week kind of like this but that's as soon as we know a hundred percent that's where it'll be um tobias is there any info on tow weight for model y um, I, I don't, I think there was like something saying what, 3,500 pounds? I don't know if it was that high, but if you pull up the, was it Tasmanian or, or Tes, Tes, Tasmania? Tasmania, um, yeah. let me see. I actually have from a couple weeks ago, all we these talked, here. We does, yeah. Give me one moment. Um, 
I don't remember that exactly, be? but they had all the information there and they were showing we about Tomo a few weeks ago. Yeah. Let me see. Um if you want to answer any questions, was that like David, the 20th or then so? I'll look through this real or quick. 21st, probably. The 21st? Talk about that. Okay. That would be my guess. Let's see. Um, I'm not seeing it on here. But I, Okay, so I'll just, while you're looking up that, um, the, the next question was about if there's more leg room. There's definitely more leg room in the Model Y than the Model 3. I'd, it's about, I'd say, five inches more. And if you look at the spec sheet we had, I think it might have that showing that, but it's 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 nicer and with the seat sitting up higher it's just a lot more comfortable yeah here's that spec sheet by the way and so we're talking leg room in the back um and actually okay leg room in the rear is 40.5 inches versus 35.2 yeah, so inches I was, I was and guessing, we were yeah i we said were, five yeah. inches and so that's there's your five inches right there yeah um in the front it is actually about an inch less that's interesting. So it goes from 42.7 to 41.8. Um, but the rear is, I mean, there's still plenty in the front. So I think the rear is really uh, what people are interested in anyway. Okay, I'm going to continue looking. Okay, you're still looking? Yeah. Well, I see, like, Zaid was asking why electric cars have to look different. And it's like, well, I don't think, you know, I some cars do look really weird. Yeah, for efficiency, they try to have the aerodynamics a lot more... Um, a lot better just so that they can be much more efficient and it doesn't take as much electricity to go as far but you know if you look at tesla the model s doesn't look it's not a weird mobile it doesn't look like the old mitsubishi imev or whatever it was called or or like some of bmw's cars those look weird but you know tesla for the most part uh, their cars have looked pretty normal and that's you know the cybertruck does look different but that's I don't know why they went that way, but oh, the Cybertruck looking different. I'm all about though. Yeah, but I mean that does look different, but they don't have to look that way. Yeah. And there's another of other. There's a lot of other cars out there coming out though. They don't have nearly the range as Teslas, but there's a bunch of other ones. You know, Hyundai and and uh, I think Kia and you know definitely the the Bolt does look a little different. But I think they're just trying to make it as aerodynamic as possible and and uh, maximize cargo room and stuff, especially in the Bolt. Yep, I. Almost have found it. I'm just double checking real quick. Okay, we'll just go. John was asking if our solar panels give us 100% of electricity. It, it depends on the time of the year. Basically, we have uh, right now about 20 kilowatts of solar. That's, and so I think it's 63 panels we have. And that can pretty much cover all of our electricity from about, you know, maybe late February to sometime in October or November, depending on the weather. So we, we can cover our 100% usage electricity for those months. When we get into the darker, colder months where there's more clouds, more snow, and you know we do have three Teslas currently that are charged um, uh, in in the garage, and uh, we can't cover that usage, you know, in January when there's a snowstorm and stuff like that. But it, other than that, it, it covers it almost the majority of the year, definitely. Yeah. Okay. So here I actually found it on the Tasmanian blog. Uh, it's just T-E-S-M-A-N-I-A-N.com. And if you do the search in the upper like right-hand corner and just look up like Model Y Toe, it'll bring up his article. And he got a hold of all this. So it says, with the 20-inch tires, you can do a maximum towing capacity of 3,200 pounds and a maximum tongue weight of 320 pounds. Um, and then it does say, note in Canada, towing is limited to 55 miles an hour. Um and it actually kind of shows like some of the lights and everything. So you can definitely check that out. But as of right now, it looks like it's going to be 3,200 pounds with five or fewer occupants. So 3,200. So Yeah. But I mean, we don't, we, we haven't seen a tow hitch from Tesla in any Model Ys yet. But what's interesting is that they're giving those numbers in pounds. And so that would limit which countries. Uh, it says kilograms next to it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It does say 1,451 kilograms. Okay. So it is there in both. So, yeah, I mean, hopefully it comes retrofittable because we really want that in ours. Yeah. So um, I saw, I see like Sam is asking about charging his car and he was asking if there's an extension cord. Normally you're not supposed to use an extension cord with a mobile charger, but if you look up, I think it's at evseadapters.com or some other sites, they do have some pretty 
heavy gauge uh, cables that you can use. And I had one, or I still have one, don't need to use it very often, but it's got a special plug so you can use it in both 1430 outlets as well as a 1450 outlet. And I think I got the 20 foot one, but they have like 50 foot ones as well. And that's just a, a nice yeah. heavy gauge cable that it's you can use. It's extremely heavy gauge, which is what you want. Yeah. And, and yeah, you can plug it in, then you plug the wall connector into that. And again, typically you're not, they don't recommend use that, but uh, these are high enough gauge that you won't have much, much loss uh, over that 20 or 50 foot range, but it definitely can help you. Typically, the only times I need mine is if I go visit my relatives out in Kansas and if their cars are in the garage, they do have a 650 outlet and I'm able to plug in. I do have an adapter for my wall connector for that, or I can put one on the extension cord and and that just allows me to get an extra, you know, twenty something feet away, mm -hmm. plus the additional like fourteen feet of the wall connector itself. Yeah. Um, let's see. John's asking, like the front window tint on your Y. Like to do mine. How much does that cost to do? And what is the tint state legal? So, and I'm not entirely sure what the legal tint is like in 30, Colorado. I think it's like thirty. Here, is it thirty? I think. Yikes. Anywho, um, I think it was like. It was under 100 per window. Um, but it really is going to depend on, one, where you go. Two, right now there's no pre-cut kit, so you need yeah. to go to a tint installer that can, like, free cut everything and maybe shave your, the edges down. And also, what kind of tint you use. Are you using a dyed tint? Are you using a ceramic tint? Yeah. Because I do everything with ceramic tint. It is more expensive, but it's what's going to give you the best properties to repel that heat. Yeah. And so even though right now we just did the two front windows, we're probably going to do a very, very light ceramic tint, maybe the lightest possible on all the other windows, just to help reduce the heat even more. Having ceramic properties on every window will just help make the interior a little cooler. But we haven't done that on all the other windows on this one yet because we're still unsure what's going to happen. Yeah, how long we're going to keep this, this car. One. Yeah. Now, when it comes to the white one, we're going to get everything ceramic tinted. It's going to be in different levels, though, because the front two windows, I'm going to need it a little darker. The rear ones are already dark, so if I do a dark on that, it's just going to make it too dark. So Yeah, you can do almost a clear... Exactly. Clear. I think you can do like a 5% yeah. or something like that, so it just gives you the ceramic properties without too much tint. Um, but I always go ceramic and that's what I would advise. But again, it's going to vary state by state and everything. Um, let's see. Australia, hopefully I said that right, um, says, are the B pillar cameras on Model Y less prone to being blinded by the sun compared to the three? That's our initial thoughts. Now, I don't have a three. Okay, so we own a three, but it's not here. Um, but... As soon as I can, I'll uh, be doing an update on that. It does look like they did change the co coverings or the, I don't know what you would call it. Like the, the glass. The housing, yeah, like the housing around the camera does look slightly different in the Y. So it might be that it was changed just kind of block the sun a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, Riley says the Taycan is nice in that it has a charge port on both sides of the car. Yeah, I always... I, wasn't familiar. I thought it was only on the passenger. Yeah, I, but is it the exact same charge port or is it uh, two different charge ports? I don't know. Riley, if you're still here, do you mind answering that? Yeah, and it, that's one thing we had predicted when the 3 came out years ago. We were like, hey, look, they've got room. Even on the S and the X, they could put another charge port on the other, uh, the other side if they wanted, but that would add to the cost, and so that's why they mm -hmm. haven't. And, and typically all superchargers are laid out the same way that you know, you know it's always going to be on the same side. Um, let's see. So PSY Tech, uh, where Psy should tech. I, oh, Psy tech. uh, where should I tint and what percentage of model three in Denver? Uh, I go to Colorado detail. He's done great on all our cars. Um, and he has like a little store display in there. So you can actually see the different tints and he has a bunch of pictures. Um, so I would check with him. He's done great on all ours. So yeah. Uh, I've seen a few people saying streams dropping frames and lagging a little bit though, but it seems like it kind of fixed itself it looks it looks okay to me if it's still lagging let me know um steven oh snap i caught a live stream hey guys from a fellow coloradan welcome hopefully you are doing good oh, wow. let's see we have someone richard from gold coast australia um would love having tesla invest on improving the supercharging network in australia it needs work i it, to be honest i think it needs a little bit of work kind of everywhere yeah but they've done um, a good job so far this year exactly i definitely think at least here <laughs> this 
a whole situation with coronavirus. I said the C word again. Yeah, slowing Sorry. things down. It's definitely going to slow things down. Especially just, with, I think the V3 superchargers are built or, you know, manufactured yeah. in the Buffalo Gigafactory. And I believe that was shut down as well. Or they're actually switching part of it over to build, like, ventilators or something like that. So, yeah, I can see that maybe slowing down supercharger rollout here. But it would be nice if they did add stuff, you know, here as well as in other countries. Yeah. Um, let's see. John asks, when tinting the front door glass, do they have to remove the glass um, to tint it? No. So they actually don't have to remove any of the door tint. They actually trick the car. So normally when you leave the door open, it drops down a little bit. So they trick the car, making it think that the door is closed to raise that glass back up and they push it down far enough. Um, but yeah, they don't have to remove anything that that could get really messy. Um but no, they've done a great job. Uh, Eric, love that you spell it with a K. Um, mm -hmm. It says, nice shirt, Derek. Thank you. I'm, I'm venturing out to different colors. I've been wearing a lot of black, gray, and white lately, and a lot of people have been noticing and commenting on that. So we are venturing out. <laughs> and I actually cleaned my closet um, with everything that's kind of going on and found a lot of stuff that I didn't know I had. Let's see. Riley, can we see your setup, monitors, microphone, etc.? cetera? Um, I'm trying to think how I can do this with the cameras have I have. To maybe next week or something, you can give a yes. tour or something like that because you'd have next, to pick up one yeah, of the cameras. I need to get a longer wire on yeah. this one. Um, otherwise, it won't Or show. we could take a picture. Or, Here, yeah. I, could take, I can try taking a picture really quick. I mean, then, it's kind of a mess over there, but yeah, yellow. Let me try it. I can send it to you really He'll send quick. a quick pic, and then yeah. we can upload it. Um, let's see... Are we a fan of the TV show Transformers Prime? Never seen it, actually. Yeah, I remember regular Transformers, but I don't know if yeah. that's any different from Transformers Prime. Uh, we did just... Okay, maybe this is a little off topic. Uh, we did just finish Silicon Valley, oh, and yeah. um, I absolutely love that show. I'm very disappointed it's over. Um, but we just finished that, so we are looking now for new shows. I've been hearing a lot about Tiger King. Is that what it's called? Yep. Tiger Tiger King lately, so maybe we'll try that out. I don't one, know. And one thing about, uh, for those of you who have internet access, you can actually get HBO. They have like over 500 hours of free programming available now. It's called Stay Home Box Office, and they've made a lot of their series, a lot of movies available for free. You do not even need to sign up for an account. Just download their HBO Now or even their HBO Go app, and you can watch hundreds of hours of stuff for free. Yep. So it's a great deal. They're just trying to keep people... Stay at home, just watch movies, you know, kind of like the Netflix and chill thing, but it's on HBO. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to show a picture of the setup. No judging, though, because I still need to do some wire work. We just got everything hardwired with internet because we upgraded our internet. So no judging for the wires yet. Maybe like next week or something. So here's what it actually looks like. This is me working literally right now. Um, so I have like some OBS. I have some notes. I have stream. Um, different things set up. I haven't actually started using... This over here was originally supposed to be for comments and chat, but I look at it, and then I'm not looking at the camera. So we're still trying to figure setup and everything, but I have one PC over here that runs streaming, and that's this big 49-inch, and this one right here, and then this is like my gaming rig. Mm -hmm. Which Things are going to be changing, though, because we are going to be moving this around just in the next couple of days. That's because true. Because we're going to be doing some more gaming. We're getting into... Uh, COD. Yeah. Call of Duty. Um, Wars, Warzone stuff. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be playing that yeah. shortly. And I don't know. Do you guys want me to start streaming like when we're gaming? I can do that. Obviously not on this might, channel because that would be weird. Probably a different channel. But um, <laughs> maybe we'll do like a different channel for that. But I think I might just stream it anyway because I'm gaming and we can just chat while we game. Um, but back on here, so I do have like several lights, just some acoustic foam, cool Roadster thing. And so we have two streaming cameras. So the one on the left is an A6500 Sony. And then this one, or sorry, the one on the right is the A6500. The one on the left is the new A6600. So that is why everything should look super nice and crispy. This one does look a little yellow, though, now that you mention it. Versus David's cam, everything looks much whiter. So I don't know, maybe the yellow... Yeah, the white balance or something? Yeah, or? it might have gotten messed up on that. I was just yeah, shooting some yeah, things yeah, where I had to the seats. You can, tell, you can definitely tell yeah. the difference. These are It does do, look a little yellow. But on my camera, they're like pure white. It is a little Ultra yellow. white. Very ultra white. Look how white those are. 
<laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know. It's 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 a fun streaming setup, but it's not what most people need. I'm not gonna lie. Um, let's see. Uh, someone asked if my Tesla is locked. Yes, it is locked. What, kind of yeah. Do they just mean question. like locked? Like I don't understand. Yeah, I don't know. Unless I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see, Bob. Uh, I recognize you, Bob. Welcome. Uh, National Drive Electric Week is September 26th through October 4th, 2020. In Denver, there's a green home tour. Uh, we should enter. Um, so we've actually done some things with like Denver Tesla Club and everything at our place. I just have a hard time having people over that I'm not familiar with, just with everything going on. Oh, yeah, um, especially, yeah, we don't really want to expose ourselves to a bunch of, uh, you know, potential you know trying to shelter in, pl in place and yeah i mean this is in september but it's just like <laughs> i don't just want like a bunch of like random people but i mean it's been asked a lot so maybe we there's have, a potential mm -hmm. i just like don't necessarily need my address out there either yeah but we have held uh tesla events for the denver tesla club yeah. at our house in the past and they've been able to see our power walls and and oh yeah, I know, actually, did we have our solar panels and power walls back then? I can't remember. We might have just had the garage. Um, I um, honestly don't know. I'd have to think back. Yeah, yeah, I think that was 2017 or 2018, right before we got solar. So, yeah. yeah. We at least got to see the cars. Yep. Um, let's see. Dave is asking, what's the latest status of software feature parity between Model 3 and Model Y? I mean, we're, I we're think... We're still a few weeks back because we're on like 2020. Five, I yeah. Believe, whereas there's like 2020.12 has been rolling out. A lot of people are on 2020.8. So like the software numbers different, but I think everything like in the software is basically identical. I can't think of any differences from when we had the Model Three. Yeah, there's. I think there's it's not a lot know. of huge differences in 2020.8, so you wouldn't really notice what was missing, I guess. Yeah. We, I mean, and we still haven't got the updated maps on the Model Y, so. Yeah. And you don't, of course, have. The, we're not in the early access program, so we're not seeing those latest builds there with the you know, full self-driving functionality. And yeah. But hopefully we'll be seeing those in the next few weeks. Yeah. Uh, Lee Olson just picked up my Model Y yesterday. Congratulations. Let me know what kind uh, of color you got. They're still delivering. Yeah. And they still have some out there in inventory. They're still delivering. So there yep. might still be hope for us getting our Y here sometime in April. Yep. Uh, looking for aftermarket suppliers for the ramp for the center console and a few other things can you advise? So actually our channel sponsor, Abstract Ocean, we love them. Um, if you use code Tesla inventory on their website, you can get 15% off your first purchase. But they have a lot of really cool stuff and we actually just did a bunch of stuff. Oh, someone asked you to put your seatbelt on? We got the, the, oh, okay. the regular request. Of, um, I did wear my seatbelt earlier when I always wear the seatbelt during the news updates, but sometimes we will. Uh, Put it on. There we go. We're clicked in. Um, for a few minutes. But they make a lot of really cool stuff. We put in a lot of fun things in Model Y earlier this week. I actually did some Instagram polls on what y'all wanted to see and stuff like that. But um, we should have a video coming hopefully Wednesday. Don't quote me on that. But hopefully Wednesday of that. And um, yeah, we have a lot of fun stuff. But they have all kinds of cool stuff for S, X, 3, and Y. So definitely check them out. They really help support the channel, which helps bring you guys all kinds of cool content. And we love to support them. We've actually been using their products well before we were a channel sponsor. They're just the best I've ever used. And their customer support, the best. You can't find better. They're amazing people. So, so I see Diego was asking if we tried the dryer buddy. We've heard of it. We haven't tried it yet. Oh, I was really looking to that a while back because my mom has a Tesla and she did not get a 1450 outlet or a wall connector installed and her laundry room was right there. And so we were looking into the dryer buddy and, and it's just a product that allows you to share like a 1430 outlet so that you don't have to unplug your dryer and plug in your, your mobile mm, connector. Yeah. So we, we haven't tested ourselves, but I know they've been around for several years. So he must be, you know, doing something right. I know there is another product product i don't know the name right now but it, it looks a little more finished than the dryer buddy but i i don't know if it has as many different options on it so there's some things out there maybe that maybe that's the ev power share that he's talking mm. about there but yeah we have not tried those ourselves yeah uh andrew um this might be a silly question but whatever blue or white on a model three can't decide 
I mean, we're we're biased. We're gonna say white. We're gonna say white. The white just looks so good, and it's the pearl white for me. I don't really like the regular non pearlescent white. But they haven't um, offered that in like. But yeah, four they don't years, even so. offer that anymore. But the pearl <laughs> white just looks so so good. To be honest, though, the blue in sun once you get it really polished and cleaned up does look good. So they all look nice. It's, it's up to you, yeah, to be honest. Yeah, they, they all well. I I I'm not partial to black, but we haven't seen any black model wise. I don't like a black for a couple of reasons. They just show it shows swirl marks like and crazy, dirt really bad. Yeah. And I think that's why Tesla no longer makes that free because too many people were getting it and they were seeing swirl marks because literally you look at black paint and it scratches. Yeah, it shows the scratch. And I guess all paints do, but that yeah. shows up. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Um, someone said Ozark on Netflix. We'll have to check that out. Thank you for the suggestion. Um, so Eric's wondering how long would it take to recharge the Tesla at our house with one mile of range? Um, mm -hmm. so fully charged from fully empty would probably be about eight hours ish. We get about 40 miles per I think you hour. Get, you get, I think a little even faster than Do that. I? Um, okay. Um, I mean, I know the three was like 45, um, if you were charging at the full 48 amps. So it, yeah. Yeah. So what's your range? Because you're like at 280 or something. Yeah, I'm at like 280 divided right. by 40, what, 42? Something around there. So so that would be only like less than seven hours. Yeah, maybe less six, than seven. Maybe less than six and a half hours to charge it from totally empty to, to to full. But again, you don't always, you don't charge it up to totally full. Yeah. And we really never get it totally empty when we're at home. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so Brian and Snow Cinematics actually said, maybe try it on a Twitch channel. Fun fact, I actually have a Twitch channel because yeah. I took a week off work for Far Cry 4 oh, when it came off I so I could that. literally stream for like tw the entire time. Several days. And I was streaming, I think it was like 27 hours and then I went to take a quick break, decided to shut down the computer, turn it back on and I was plagued with the didn't save um issue mm. and so 27 hours of gameplay lost i kind of uh gave up gave yeah. up and yeah. just hung out for the rest of my week off <laughs> um but now that i have multiple pcs and kind of figured stuff out uh i definitely think uh we'll start live streaming some gaming the cool thing that if we do, i mean i guess you can live stream directly into a, a youtube and a tesla but there also is the twitch uh link in the Tesla theater as well. So yeah. either one of those would be viewable right from the Tesla. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start some gaming up. Um, I don't I don't know what my Twitch is. I don't know if YouTube will get mad at me for this. You, Do you yeah. think YouTube would get mad at me? I don't know. Maybe I won't do that. Anyway, if you want to see gameplay, follow me on Twitter or Instagram, stuff like that, and I'll post it there. I just don't want to m make YouTube mad. But it's completely different. This is Tesla channel. <laughs> um, let's see. <clears throat> Gymnast 1000, how much does it usually cost you to tint your windows? So I don't remember my last bill. I think it was for Model 3, all the windows. I want to say it was like 1200 maybe. And one thing about the Model 3 is they like do that. have that huge glass in the rear yes and if you want to get someone that does it the right way and do it doesn't one big piece that adds a lot to the cost if you get go someplace cheaper they would you know only do like partial because there is some tinting in it already but you can very greatly again as eric mentioned earlier we always get this uh ceramic tint so which costs more than cheaper tints and there's all different prices available oh yeah and i mean to be honest i've seen people that'll do it much cheaper but at the same point, they won't do that back glass in one solid piece. They kind of piece it together, and you'll always see that line, which irritates me. Um, so the nice thing with Colorado Detail, that's why I go through locally, they do it all in one piece, which is really, to be honest, my opinion, how it should be done. Did it looks see, way better. I saw um, Saskar asked about the real range on a sunny day versus on a cold day. Did you answer that one yet? I don't think you did. Um, no. So we haven't taken, you know, we haven't done a big road trip or anything on the Y yet, so we can't really say. Do you know what your average is? Or I honestly don't. No. I can go run upstairs and look real quick. Yeah. So okay, like Jade will take over but, for a second. I'll be right back. So we don't. I don't know. And Eric, you know, definitely he drove the Model Three a lot. He drove it cross country multiple times to California and Nevada. I don't know how many times, but uh, I know that in my Model S, like in the 90D and even the 100D, we've gone on some long road trips, and I've been able to get. Um, I know I've gone as far as 250 miles um, 
uh, you know, it's, the 90 was rated for like 293, I think, when I got it. And I was able to go about 250 miles, and I still had 20-something miles left on the battery when I pulled into the supercharger. And a little bit of trivia, but my, the supercharger that I've charged at the most is actually in Ogallala, Nebraska. So it's, it's, it's over 225 or so miles from where we live. And, and that's just the one when I do road trips. That's the one I can drive that far before I need to stop. We've also done trips from like Custer, South Dakota, all the way to like the middle of Nebraska and where there were no superchargers. So we've, we've been able, if you push it, if you know, um, drive efficiently, uh, you know, um, we don't carry a lot of extra cargo or anything like that, but we've been able to get really good range. And it also helps usually when we head east, we always are going like downhill. It doesn't sound like much, but even if you're going like a foot per mile downhill, that seems to help with your efficiency. And we always have a tailwind when we're heading uh, east to like Nebraska or Kansas. Now, conversely, when we head west, we're heading uphill and we're heading into the wind usually, and our range usually is affected some. And yeah, we have, I, I can't remember the worst mileage I got because I don't really track it. I know there are some sites and some apps that you can use to track your efficiency, but um, fortunately the superchargers are close enough that I've never really even need to worry about it. So on a cold day, I mean, I, I, I know I've seen it um, when we're driving through snow and into the wind and going uphill, maybe my, my Model S was using like 400 uh, watt hours per mile versus maybe, you know, 250 on a good day in, in the summer. Okay, so I am back. Just ran upstairs. Um, my watt hours per mile for the last 150 miles is 299. That's pretty good. Is I mean, that good? I mean, you could do better, I think. But okay. I mean, you did. Um, yeah, I think you could do better. <laughs> but you know, it has I'll been do cold. better. It but I also cold. have those big rims too. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, exactly. And those are bigger than mine. See, I only have the 19 inch. Uh, wheels on my Model S 100D, yeah. and so there's going to be more efficient than those larger 21 inch wheels. So if you would go down to 19 or 20, then I'm sure your watt hours per mile would be going down as well. Yep. And we are looking at getting different rims. I really wanted to put the Gemini's that I had on Model 3 on Model Y, but it looks like the base rim for those Gemini's is completely separate. The offset has changed, um, and everything like that. So I can't put those directly onto Model Y. So I'm just going to sell the Model 3 Geminis and probably buy a set of Model Y Geminis and maybe some other rims. I don't know. So, so we, I have a problem with rims. Yeah. So with that two, <laughs> yeah, the first step is admitting you have a problem. So just admit it so, on camera. So with that 299 watt hours per mile, that kind of works out to about 3.3 miles uh, per kilowatt. Is it, what and it multiply average. that by 74 kilowatts. You said 3.3? So that would be, that means that you're only getting about 247, 250 at that rate. So, so I need to do better. Yeah, so you do better, but again, you're, you're rated at 280 and you're getting about 250. So you could do I, better. I fa I'm failing. Yeah, but again, it has been cold. We've had snow and stuff, and you are still on those performance tires. Yeah. Um, basically, you got it delivered. We've only had it two weeks. If you were going to put it on some all-season tires, they might get better range. And and we've done some, you know, uh, testing, which might have pushed the uh, watt hours up slightly. So I'd sure if we did a long road trip, that those numbers would go down, especially as I was saying, if we're heading east into mm -hmm. Kansas or Nebraska on the highway our rate would go way down because i think on, yeah. on the three we've seen you know road trips when you're getting like 250 watt hours per mile and and when i drive um well i haven't driven to work in a couple of weeks just because we've been sheltering at place but i've had some days when even in my model s 100d i can get to work it's about 17 miles and i only average like 180 uh, watt hours per mile which yeah. is way it's like almost half of what it should be taking me but that's just because I'm going at just the right speed you know if, it, if I'm going 45 miles an hour then it's going to be a lot more efficient than um, you know at 70 miles an hour but that's yeah. that's averaging out to a five and a half miles per kilowatt which is amazing for an electric car I mean I know anyway, some other, yeah. I know some smaller do cars better. do even better than that but I can get really good yeah. numbers in my ass yeah so I mean the Model Y performance is fast. That, yeah, 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 that's another what thing. What can I say? Maybe you should try doing some tests and like do, you know, <laughs> chill mode for a while. Oh, see. yeah, that'd be funny. Um, okay, so let's see. T-Rex36 says, would it be too personal to ask what you guys do for a living? Um, no, we, we answer it normally in like every live stream. I don't really mind. I work in biotech and I also have several side businesses, side hustles, whatever you want to call them. I like to stay busy. So that's 
that's, that's all what I do. And I'm a web application developer. So there and, you go. And, and we have mentioned that we have, you know, we have purchased 11 Teslas. We do not currently own 11 Teslas. We have, yeah. we have four that, you know, are stationed here. One of those is currently, like, somewhere in the, in the Eastern Hemisphere, I think. <laughs> I don't know where it is yet. But, uh, and we do have another one that's kind of in our fleet, but it's currently in Nevada. But it might be relocating here to Colorado sometime later this year. Yep. Um, at PTC 308, I don't know if you answered this yet. Uh, do they use ro- salt on roads in Colorado? Uh, if so, have you noticed any corrosion? They um, use magnesium chloride here, yes. which is, it's, we don't notice any corrosion, but it's just really bad on the windshield. It's, it's, It'll also eat up the chrome. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, cars. we did have that problem on, on an S90D. Yeah. Not all of the chrome, but on, on the rear APK, it had some like kind of like rust spots or something like that. And uh, luckily, uh, we've, we haven't seen that lately, but also we, get our, we usually get our cars de so we don't see that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pierre Anderson, Model S have a Tempest wheel cover. Will that fit on the Gemini wheels? I don't think that will. Um, but I will say the Gemini for Model 3 and what are they calling it on Model Y? It's still Gemini. Is it still Gemini? Okay. It's- so those are the exact same wheel cover, just a different base rim yeah. uh, for different offsets and sizes. So, yeah, they're different so, widths. And so we, yeah. like he said, we originally thought we could use those Geminis from the three on the Y, but I, what is it, eight and a half inch on the uh, wide? It's 235 front and 275 rear. Yeah. So I think that's eight and a half and 10. Yeah, but on the Y, isn't it like nine and a half or something wide? Oh, no, I think that's on, it's 235, 275 on Y. Oh, uh, okay. But, um, yeah, so they're not the exact yeah. size, but the, the cover, that uh, plastic cover that snaps on is the same, so that that way you, should, you could swap those. Yeah. Um, does the YouTube login work with the Tesla theater? It fails at our Model X. I haven't logged into YouTube on the Tesla theater. We just tend to look at, like, the trending page we, and we've, stuff like that. Well, see, I should try that. I, did he ask yeah. about being able to log in? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen other people have that problem, and I actually tried logging in last week, and it says you cannot use the browser to log in. I haven't tried it yet, but someone said that you can try turning off the two-factor authentication, but I don't... Um, I don't think I have two-factor authentication turned on. So that's one thing. Somebody else said that if you go to another site, or, or you know, I turned on currently, like I turned it off, tried going to it, still didn't work. But then somebody else said you can try going to another site that uses your Google credentials. Um, I can't remember which one, but if you try that out, like Plex, or is it Plex TV or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I think it's Plex. Then you can tell it to use your Google credentials, and once you log in there, then they were able to go back and use YouTube. We haven't tried that yet, but that's something we can try. But yeah, it seems like... Um, Some people are saying it works for them. Okay. So, so I, I, I wonder if it might be two-factor. It could be that. Or again, I've seen some people say that they've tried it in the 3. It works fine. But then somebody said they tried the exact same thing in their Y and it didn't work. So that's odd. But again, the Y does have a slightly different uh, version of the firmware. So it could be maybe you need the latest browser you know, update for it to work. Yeah. Um, let's see. Model Y needs the Model 3 Performance Track Pack rims that were released recently. Do you guys agree? I mean, those are nice looking rims. I want to see really, really lightweight rims for Model Y if it gets a track package. I imagine track mode is going to be coming eventually. Um, maybe you're still just working out kinks and everything, but I, I would, I don't want to say that I think they will, but I would hope they would, um, because I'm not entirely sure. Hopefully, I guess I guess time will tell. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, let's see. I think there are a couple other ones up here that I kind of jumped over when I got back. That jumped over everything. Um, oh, uh, Dante, what's the update or news on Cybertruck? Um, you, did you cover that or no? Not no, yet. we haven't really okay. talked about Cybertruck. So unfortunately. There's no update. Um, last we heard is Elon is looking for land to build another factory to make that in the central U.S. So I know a lot of states and governors were tweeting at Elon saying, hey, we got land. We'll give you that and tax incentives and all this and that. Trying to earn a spot to probably try to like fight for getting Tesla to build the uh, cyber truck factory there but no update as of yet i, I mean, can't wait to get it though yeah and that's for sure there was a story put out earlier this week where somebody said that tesla is totally redesigning the cyber truck and some other blogs picked that story up and ran it really they didn't I realize totally missed that they didn't realize that it was posted on april fool's day and they fell oh, for that's it funny. so it was a joke and they later had to retract that 
That's funny. I totally admit, I didn't even see it. Yeah. So, yeah. I would be disappointed if they redesigned Cybertruck. Yeah, to yeah but I don't think they're going to redesign. It's so they have iconic like, now. They have half a million pre-orders. They're exactly. Not, I mean, some of those might be like, we have two pre-orders for this Cybertruck. We're probably only going to get one. But, um, you know, they still have hundreds of thousands of pre-orders that they can sell exactly the way it is as they showed it at that unveiling last November. Yeah. Um, let's see. Samuel is asking, do you have the new home charger and do you like the old one better or the new one? So we have, I think it's still considered the old one. Gen 2. The, we have Gen the, two. the three signature, you know, Elon signature wall connectors. So one thing that's better about those is that they have the longer cable. It's 24 foot cable and it can charge it up to 80 amps. So if you do have an older Tesla that has a, like a dual charger, which is 80 amps, or even a Model S or X that can go up to 72 amps, those Gen 2 chargers can charge your car a lot faster. And the nice thing too with those is they can be load balanced. You just run a little signal wire between them all, and that's how we have our three wall connectors set up. Now with the Gen 3 wall connectors, they can only charge it up to 48 amps, so it's a, a lot slower. If you only have one car, that's fine. But if you want, you know, again, if you have an older car that's 72 or 80 amps, you're not going to be able to take advantage of that with a Gen 3 wall connector. Also, currently, those Gen 3 wall connectors, they don't have the load balancing enabled. It sounds like it's a software feature that will be available in the future, and it's going to be allowing up to 16 wall connectors to be all you know, connected on the same um, uh, circuit. But right now, they don't have that enabled. So if you are looking to have multiple wall connectors in your garage, the only choice is to really do a Gen 2, a, a, a bunch of Gen 2 wall connectors. In the yeah. future, that's going to change once they, they update the software on those, but right now, not available. Yeah. Also, the cable on the uh, Gen 3 wall connector is, I think, only like 18 feet instead of 24. Yeah, you can get an eight and a half foot cable or an 18 foot cable. Yeah. Um, but the cable is thinner on the new what gen 3 is yeah that yeah okay. just because it can only do up to 48 exactly of 80 um so you get some trade-offs there but to be honest the cable on the gen 2s that we have i don't really feel is that thick um it's still pliable yeah. enough to it's do anything still way need. thinner than like a, um, a v2 supercharger exactly cable, which is you know this is a v2 supercharger which we just happen to have right here but <laughs> this is a lot Convenient. thicker than what you get on the um gen 2 or gen 3 i would say gen 2 is even like half of that yeah but and maybe gen 3 is like a third of that kind of like the wall con the mo the mobile connector is a lot thinner so that's probably what the gen 3 is like so the gen 3 is also slightly smaller it's i think a tempered glass so maybe yeah more stylish or something and i hear that they're a lot easier to install so you know they definitely have pr improved some things but they've taken some features away just you know you'd think they would have lowered the cost kind of like they did when they uh, made the mobile connector cheaper a few years ago but they didn't lower the cost uh, when they reduced the functionality yeah. so. so here's the gen 3 it's currently sold out but you can see they only have eight and a half or 18 foot cable um yeah it looks nice it's tempered white glass faceplate. Yep. So, yeah. Wi-Fi connectivity. Yeah, so that's cool that, you know, it'll be interesting to see what kind of connectivity they have because we've talked in the past about with our power walls not being able to communicate directly with the, our our wall connectors. And so maybe that's how they're going to go about doing it is to have Wi-Fi. And that'll be unfortunate uh, if we're not able to take advantage of those you know, communication, because we've still proposed some ways where they could have the wall connectors check to see if your power walls are on the network, if your grid is up, if not, they could turn off uh, charging of the cars. But if they have Wi-Fi, they could instantly communicate directly with the power walls, potentially. Yep. Um, let's see. Of the two USB charging docks in the back only for charging, or can you use them with a wired remote control to play games? in the Model 3 and Y screen while sitting in the back for the kids. So if it's anything like 3, it's just charging only. Um, but I'll have to play around with that. I'll take one of mine and uh, plug it in the back and see how it goes. Uh, Eric's asking how we feel. I feel good. Oh, yeah. No, no problem. So, yes. Hopefully everyone's feeling good um, and staying safe. Uh, let's see. JPTV, current charging habits... And do you guys keep your cars plugged in even when not driving them? So Elon's kind of addressed this a few times online. We charge everything up to 
is like our daily. Usually 80%, but you know, I've been working. I guess from, it depends. Yeah. I've been working from home like the last three weeks. So I just have my car down to like 60% now because that still gives me like almost 200 miles of range. And yeah. I'm not driving it. So there's no reason to have it charged to 80. And the closer it is to 50, I think that that helps with the longevity of the battery I think the, the 60 life. to 80 is the sweet spot. Yeah. But you've been keeping it at like 60 anyway. And I just keep it plugged in, you know, and I typically plug it in, you know, probably six days a week. And if I don't drive it, it might have a little bit of drain throughout the week, just a few miles. But then when it tops off, it only charges for like 15 minutes and it will use a few kilowatt hours. Yeah. And so I drive mine pretty much every day without exception of the weekend. And I plug mine in every night. Set to, the charge to eighty percent, and yep. it charges every morning. And tip, you know, typically, you know, we would have charged Eric's car today. If you look at the graph um, for today's uh, solar usage and generation and energy usage, we charged one car. It started about two a.m., and it looks like the power walls were actually charging the car. Then the power walls shut down, and the car continued to charge with grid. Oh, it looks like I don't have the grid uses on, but uh, turned on on that graph. But that was charged from the grid, the other half, and then. Later on, we charged Eric's car, the Y started charging, and then it was like, wait a minute, we're going to test the new supercharger today, so we stopped it, so just so we could try to get some lower state of charge on the Model Y and see how fast of a charge we could get. And then later on, as the sun came up, um, my car topped off, and, and uh, part of it was covered by solar, part of it was covered by the grid. And then you can see we did a few loads of laundry there later on in the day. Look, that's, not the dry, that's the dryer, not the washer, yeah. just because we have an electric dryer. Dryer uses quite a lot. So yeah, we typically keep our cars char- uh, plugged in. Um, you know, if there was a really major thunderstorm or something, maybe we'll unplug them. But it's not that time of the year yet, so they're usually plugged in. Yep. Let's see. On here we have Pete. Does the Y ride smoother and quieter than Model Three? So I still need to collect data, which is tough because I don't have a Model Three right here, and I need to do as many things as possible on mm-hmm. them and current situation but i have driven model threes a lot and my first impressions on the model y is yes it feels smoother and quieter which are two big things that i wanted to see so how tesla did that i'm not sure how they necessarily made it quieter but i'd I'd say it seems quieter i don't know about the smoothness but i'm used to the model s and my model you're used to air suspension my model s has an air suspension It, it is much smoother than any Model 3 or Model Y that I've ever yes. been in. I don't even have the Raven suspension, which is, you know, uber smooth. But uh, I'm happy with my air suspension. The, the Model Y and Model 3 are still okay, but, I mean, I can definitely feel it on some of our roads with, you know, potholes and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, Grego Music, uh, what are your thoughts on longevity of Teslas when they approach out of warranty? A friend still has his S from years ago, and so far nothing major, but I see videos of quality issues. I mean, any car could potentially have quality issues when it gets older. Now, I haven't really seen anything too, too major, and most issues are still within, uh, most expensive issues are still within warranty, um, like the battery and everything for S and stuff like that. Um, and we've, but I, we really haven't had any issues. No issues. I mean, we've purchased 11 Teslas over the last four years and we've never had any major problem with ours. I don't think we've ever spent a penny on service. Everything's been covered by the warranty. Now we do have a model S that is outside of warranty right now. And we, you know, we did take it in and get a few things checked. It did have a few problems that were covered under the warranty, but nothing major. And, um, yeah, we've been pretty pleased with ours. And, and with any car, you're always going to have some that have a problem. We've been lucky with all of ours. Yeah. Um, let's see. Greg is saying, I, or, sorry, George, I can't read, um, is saying, I just tried to log into YouTube on my Model 3. It failed saying try a different browser. Is the browser moving to Chrome soon? Yeah, so yeah, that's. I mean, we kind of hoped that a long time ago. That's but yeah, that's the problem we were talking about a little bit earlier. But yeah, it's it's we can't get logged into YouTube, so it's it would be nice if we could because we'd be able to see just you know trending videos that we're interested in and yeah. But yeah, so yeah, let us know if there's others have been able to get in. Do you have two factor turned on? You know, is there something else that you're doing differently? But yeah, we can't get logged in at least on the Y. We don't have the three anymore to try. And our Model S's don't have MCU2 yet. But that's something I'm definitely going to try once I get the MCU2 upgrade. Oh, you bet. For sure. Um, Let's see. Pete says hello from California. Hello. Thank you for joining. Um, Let's see. Amit, uh, will Tesla stock price go down after Q2 results? Well, I mean, technically, Q2, we don't know what it's going to look like yet. I think they meant Q1 
Or, well, you know, they no, could they said Q2. Up. Okay, because we um, don't know all the Q1 stuff. We know a couple yeah. numbers, but yeah, they could go down with Q2. Q2, we just don't know how long they're going to be basically shut down. Yeah. We've been seeing end of April. We've been seeing potentially June. So, I mean, if it's June, they're really not going to be producing much. But to be yeah. honest, everything in the stock market Everything's is right going now. to go down. So um, don't, don't. I'm not going to give anyone yeah. stock advice because that's not what I can do. But... Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily yeah. be surprised if it went down because yeah. everything is. I think yeah, things could go down even further just because the longer these you know stay in place, shelter in place, it goes on, and the longer the factories close, it's just gonna and the the economy in general is probably gonna be down for a while. I mean, it's already down worse than it's been in like the last three years, I believe. I mean, they've had a couple up days or down days, but it's it's not as good as it used to be. Yeah. Um, let's see. David asks, with the gas prices low, is it still cheaper to use electric vehicles? Um, it is. It's obviously not as cheap and as beneficial as it is. But there's also, especially for us, the fact that we do produce so much solar and everything, we're basically net zeroing out. So we're not using electricity coming from like coal and stuff like that. So we have other motives for going electric not just is it cheaper, but I think it still is. It's really going to depend on what gas especially, prices do. Yeah, though. especially in the state because, you know, California gas yeah. might be cheaper, but it's still a lot more than in other parts of the country. Yeah, and some places have cheaper charging rates uh, during the night. Yep. And if you're in a place like that, it can really be beneficial because you can normally charge for a quarter or even less than you normally would pay for electricity during the day. Yeah, some states like Texas even have like free electricity at night. So, you know, you're never going to get free gas at night, you know, yeah. not going to happen. So, exactly. But if you get an electric car and you live in Texas and you can sign up for that plan, you might never have to pay to charge your car. Or better yet, get solar and then you can just produce it yourself. Uh, let's see, Snow Cinematics, welcome. Uh, isn't there... A uh, bit more motor wine in the Y. Uh, do you like it if there is any at all? Um, I don't know if there's necessarily the more, but I think it's like the same. But when you punch punch it in 3Y, yeah. even S and X, you're really going to hear those motor that motor wine. And if you l go back and check out, I think it was, um, what race was that that I live streamed? Mm, Laguna second. Oh yeah, Laguna. When I was doing that, uh, I actually had the rear seats removed, and that actually dampens that motor whine a lot. And you could really hear. It. Even people in live stream were commenting on how they could really hear it. And, um, I actually kind of yeah. like the motor. Yeah, whine. and also on that, you're gonna hear it. Like if you were going fast and you take your foot off and you try to get that yeah. regen, then you're gonna hear the whine a little bit more. And you know, it's it's not too loud. And and also, I mean, I can still hear it fine, but I know some older people can't even hear like those high pitch noises so it is definitely <laughs> higher pitch yeah and but you know i could definitely hear it in the y more than i i think the s but maybe we should do a test on that to see if it's just our perception of it or if it really is wider i don't know yeah but, and again in a rear wheel drive uh vehicle such as an older model s um they don't have that front motor so the that <clears throat> the only noise would be coming from the rear motor yeah and since it's under that seat you don't really hear it much in those older model s's I love so, it though. But yeah, that could be explained why why you might hear it more in a Y than an old Model S, just because yep. it does have those dual motors. Uh, David, with all your Tesla experience, uh, do you have any thoughts and recommendations and considerations for someone considering getting their first Tesla? How is the switch? Um, it depends what you're coming from. I actually came from a hybrid already, so it was a little easier. Um, but the like one pedal driving um, can take people a little bit more to get used to. Uh, that regen, but you really want to use that regen as much as possible. Um, as far as like what model they should get, um, what do you think, David? I think again, it, it, we always have this question. It depends yeah. on how many people are in your family. If and, oh, true, you know, and, and and what much, utility features what you utility want. features you need. So basically, if you're single, you could probably get by with a Model S, or you could get by with any of them. You could probably get it by with a three. Yeah, the, oh, sorry, Model Three is what I meant. Oh, okay. Yeah, Model Three because it's going to be the smallest, um, most efficient one you can get, and it's definitely the cheapest one. But it is limited on cargo capacity. Yes. And the Model Y, you know, next step up, next step up in price too. But it holds more people. It holds the same number of people, or maybe more once they add that third row. But it definitely has a lot better cargo room. In more the Model comfort y. features too, because you get the air suspension that three and Y don't have. Yeah. And but the Model S, you know, you can find some. Older Model S's, you know, um, 
they're, you know, they're now Model S's that are like eight, going on almost eight years old, and uh, those have really come down in price. But you, you're going to decide: do you want to spend thirty-five thousand dollars on a brand new Model Three, or thirty-five thousand dollars on like a seven-year-old Model S? You know, I, I do like the Model S better, but I'm looking more at maybe 2016, 2017, 2018 Model S. Those are still down in price. Um, you know, comparable to like a performance Model 3. So I would just look again at how many passengers. If you need seating for six or seven, that's really going to limit you to a Model X. Yeah. But yeah, really any of them are great. So it really depends on what kind of would work for you and your family and situation and everything. Um, let's see. Riley said, good thought, David. Should you unplug during an electrical storm? Yeah, that's kind of what we touched on a few minutes ago. It's yeah. like, and, you know, theoretically, maybe you don't need to, but I mean, it's, it's an expensive car. I'm not going to leave it plugged in if, if unplugging it's going to prevent it from getting fried. So I don't know. I've never heard, only one time I heard of a Tesla, like, having electrical problems in an electrical storm was actually when someone was at a supercharger when lightning struck nearby. And that was you know, probably four or, or more years ago. I have never heard it. So I don't think it's a common problem, but if you can prevent it by just unplugging your car, might as well. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Rock, what do you think about the sentry mode viewer that's on the way? I'm really excited. I've always wanted to try to view those in the car. It just makes it that much easier. And that way you can confirm what exactly you maybe want to take off and what you don't. Um Yes, uh, KK said I had to use the Plex hack to log into yes, YouTube. I've heard about that, but we haven't tried that in a while yet. But we could we could try that after this video and see if it works. Yeah, uh, Eric says, has your Tesla ever run out of battery? Mine has not, but Sean Mitchell and I. Oh yeah, we actually yeah. Um, did a hypermile in Model Three. I don't know if you guys saw it. If you did, um, let's get some claps in chat yeah. for uh, that because that was us was in epic. a Model Three for thirty seven hours. Something something around there. It over. Was, it was stupid. Um, and that we did it at like 25 miles an hour and just a one mile loop. We live streamed the entire thing. David was helping run food to us. Yep. Uh, he was throwing burritos into nets that yeah. we had so they, we didn't have to, to stop. stop. They were, I, um, yeah. We made some great memories of that. And, yeah. and all of that is available. Like you said, he live streamed yes. it. We broke it up into different videos and then there was like a summary video at the end. But that was yeah. a couple of years ago in the Model 3 and, and the range, it was 606 miles or somewhere yep. around there. Yeah, 606, I think, On one two. charge. And the battery was only rated for like, what, 310 or something? Yeah. And we were able to get 606 miles. So if you drive at a slow enough speed your efficiency goes way up i mean yeah you can go really far but we did run that one completely out of battery yeah and we did you know have an issue <laughs> where it only it actually not only drained the main battery but it killed the 12 volt battery as well and so eh, a little bit of a problem yeah. uh, tesla checked it out and because it wouldn't start afterwards yeah and the issue was is we drained the 12 volt battery um that's why it wouldn't start charging. But it turns out that the main battery pack was fine. They checked everything out. All was well with that. And, and also a little um, bit of but, trivia is they hit like zero. It says zero range. Yeah. Left. They still drove for like another 50 miles after they hit zero. And so that was when it was actually using the 12 volt battery. Had they stopped at zero, they probably would have been able to, we were right by a supercharger, probably could have plugged it in and would have charged us fine. Tesla has updated the software, you know, the firmware multiple times since then. So you can never rely on being able to drive below zero. So don't try, yeah. don't think you have a 50 mile buffer. You might not. Yeah. Um, let's see, Ari says, has a good example. Uh, my wife pays $100 instead for our long range Model 3 dual motor instead of 400 in gas, she paid for the Chevy Sonic manual transmission. Uh, and they're just outside of Philly. Um, yeah, it's another thing. So when we, yeah. when we talk about our electricity and being able to cover with solar our electrical usage on three Teslas on a daily, you know, almost daily drivers when we do drive them, and, and all of our household power, but we also we, don't pay. We for also gasoline. don't pay any gas. We do not have gas cars. We have not had gas cars since you know, like early 2018. And so we're saving about $400 a month between electricity and not having to pay any gas anymore. Yeah, and that's huge. Once you factor in all those savings, I mean, it just stacks up. Thousands of dollars a year and, and it's all you know green energy because it's all solar. Yeah. Uh, John said he has Excel Energy in Minnesota and from 9 a.m. to 9, or sorry, 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. it costs four cents a kilowatt. Uh, but you have to have a separate meter put in. Yeah, but I mean, that four cents is probably at least a third, if not more than what it normally costs. Because I think 
it sounds typical to like what our rate used he's to probably be. On time of, he's probably time on time of, of use. use or something like that. I think ours is like eight cents at night, which yeah. is still cheap. But during the day, I think it's currently, like in the peak hours, is going to be like 20 cents or so, maybe 18 to 20. And then they are going to be adjusting the rates in the future, um, but they're going to actually be moving everybody I know in, in all Colorado Excel customers over to that time of use just because they're going to be charging more in peak hours and less at night hours. Yeah. But that's going to be requiring a smart meter so they can keep track like every 15 minute period throughout the day of how many kilowatt hours or how many kilowatts you're using and how many kilowatt hours per hour. Uh, Ari is saying, I'm a master electrician. The charger or wall or mobile would get fried first, not the car. I assume that was when we were talking about the electrical storms. So that's definitely good to know. I mean, that's kind of what I would have thought. But I mean, I guess I'm more on the side of caution. Yeah. And. Because yeah. that's that's something expensive. Yeah, <laughs> but again, that's why I said that's probably why we're never hearing of that problem because it doesn't happen. Like I said, I've only heard of one car having problems with electrical surges, and that was at a supercharger like four years ago. So yeah. Oh, seems a lot of people remember uh, yeah. yep. that video. Yep. God, that was so much fun. Me. Yeah, we'll have to try to do something else with that. It was a fun video when we did that. It was 37 hours, though, so it was a heck of a time Non-stop. commitment. Non-stop. I mean, they did stop a couple times just for a quick, quick, uh, you know, I think we break. stopped to grab a bite to eat real quick and use the restroom. Yeah, but uh, I gave them food sometimes, but, and, you know, it was... I mean, it was, it was pretty much, like, all driving, yeah. and we would just take turns sleeping, and, like, to be honest, though, I didn't sleep a lot, and I don't think Sean did either, because whoever was in the passenger seat was oftentimes talking with chat and like yep. answering questions. But that was such a fun experience. It really was. I had such a great time with that. That, you know what, would actually pretty, that would rank up really high on like one of like my top Tesla experiences. It was a blast. Um, let's see. How much does launching affect Tesla's range? A lot. A lot. Yeah, you can use because like, you can use a mile or two in a few seconds. Yeah, and so I don't. Do you know what your peak like watt hours per mile is? Like, like eight hundred or a thousand or oh, more? I think it was like thirteen hundred on model yeah, three. Yeah, it goes way up. So I mean, that can use six, seven, eight times as much energy yeah. when when doing a launch and driving at those high speeds versus driving at an efficient, you know, constant speed. Yeah. Uh, we're getting some messages in chat saying Sandy Morono uh, posted that the Model Y rear seats will be backward facing. I'll have to check that out. Okay, so um, that, but that kind of we touched on that earlier. But yeah, kind of makes more sense. That would help with the headroom and the leg room. Could the legs could fit right back there? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We've been live for an hour, almost two hours oh, now, wow. which I don't know where time went. Yeah, it went somewhere. Um, but I definitely had a blast chatting with everybody. Um, hopefully you guys got all your answers, question, your answers questioned. Wow. It's been a long day, I guess. I've had a long day. Hopefully you had all your questions answered. If you didn't, once this video is done live, it will be rendered and processed by YouTube and then uploaded. Definitely put your questions down in that and we will try to answer them all for you. Again, though, huge thanks for hanging out and everything. And as always, thanks to our channel sponsor, Abstract Ocean. We're Again, if what? Maybe we're having company. Hanging oh, out. I think the puppies are coming down. <laughs> um, but <laughs> yeah, huge night. thanks to Abstract Ocean for sponsoring the channel. If you guys are looking to accessorize your SX3 or Y, definitely check them out. And using code Tesla inventory will get you 15% off your first purchase. Oh, we have some very excited little, puppies. Little, yeah, they're like, it's time to come up there. Um, they're probably food. hungry. Hi, puppies. Uh, I don't know if Scott fed them yet, <laughs> but um, yeah. Anyway, though, definitely smash that thumbs up button if you haven't already. Subscribe, turn on those notifications. A lot of fun videos coming this week. And um, yeah, I guess we will see you all um, next week. Next I mean, week. we'll have some videos during the week, but we'll be live again next Saturday. And if we buy and some stroke of luck, get that Model Y oh, white yeah. one, then we'll be seeing you a lot sooner. Yeah, so <laughs> I guess we'll see if we get another Tesla. Um, but yeah, huge thanks to everyone for hanging out. It's been a blast. We will see you all next week. Stay safe, self-quarantine, social distance, all that fun jazz. And um, yeah, we'll see you then. Bye.